folks, welcome to a terrific Tuesday edition of Popstar Plus. On the show today, we're getting ready for WrestleMania this weekend with WWE superstar Bianca Belair. Then we're going to switch gears from the ring to somewhere over the rainbow. Our third hour friends had a very inspiring conversation for Women's History Month with Judy Garland's granddaughter. So we'll have that for you. And later, we're celebrating the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Walken. But first, here are today's pop start headlines. First up, our friends, this is great. Quest Love starts off pop start for all a great reason. Can't forget that following that infamous slapping incident at the Oscars on Sunday, Amir Thompson, aka Quest Love, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, Summer of Soul, earning him his first Oscar and nomination. Quest celebrated by DJing at Beyonce and Jay Z's Oscar party, then hopping on a plane late night back to NYC to make it back in time for Monday's Tonight Show wow. taping. Of course, wow. Quest Love there greeted by the staff, <laughs> filling the studio. 6B uh, to celebrate his milestone achievement and today we are sending him a huge congrats from all of us here in Studio 1A. Yeah. Very yes. cool. Uh -huh. Next up, Uncle Al, the Proud family, louder and prouder. Last month, the hit animated series returned, continuing the next chapter of Penny Proud's hijinks and adventures. But what would a Proud family reboot be without the master <laughs> of mischief himself, Mr. Al Roker? <laughs> We've got an exclusive sneak peek at Uncle Al's big return in this week's brand new episode. Uh-uh, here is a tip, Roker. Colored glasses don't make you look younger. <laughs> oh, very funny. I expect better from you, Penny. Especially after I helped you out. Helped me out? When? Oh, come on. You remember? That BB and Cece thing. Man, I wish you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. Consider it done. Hey, Penny. Anyway, I got a big promotion out of that. I'm working directly with the big guy downstairs. Don't you mean upstairs? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it almost looks like what you're wearing oh right my now. Yeah. That is awesome. That is what he's wearing right now. Well, there you go. Yeah, you planned that up perfectly. They, they, they do such a terrific job. I, there are kids or young adults who come up to me now and say, they didn't know I did the, tea, the, did the weather. Oh, yeah. they, they, they just knew me from the Proud Family. <laughs> right. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Very nice. Well, congrats. That looks fun. The next episode of The Proud Family, Loud and Prouder, starts streaming on Disney Plus tomorrow. So be sure and check that out. Next up, Taylor Swift. Cue this year's graduation theme, Swift Song 22. The Grammy-winning chart-topping superstar about to add yet another title to her name, Doctor of Fine Arts. On Monday, New York University announced that Swift's going to receive the honorary degree at this year's graduation, where she's also been named as one of the ceremony speakers after the pandemic postponed NYU's comm commencement for all the classes. From 2020 and 2021, this year's ceremony will act as sort of a super graduation. Wow. They'll honor all three of those graduating classes, and the soon-to-be Dr. Swift, that's funny, will deliver her address at at Yankee Stadium on May 18th. Wow. You know, there's, Congrats there's to the a course at NYU on Taylor Swift. Oh, that, yeah, has sure. a okay. yeah, that has a waiting list a cool. mile long. People can't get what into it. What do they do in that? I don't know, but it's wow. really it's popular. popular. They write songs oh, about ex-boyfriends. Cool. And if you get a bad oh. break, you just shake it off. All right, and now a little bit uh, a little bit more for you, hence the plus and Popstar Plus. A couple more headlines. First up, John Travolta, the beloved actor, turned out to be probably the biggest winner at the Academy Awards, and he wasn't even nominated. John and his son, Ben, left the show on Sunday night as the proud owners of a brand new puppy. Apparently, little mac and cheese made an appearance at the show during Betty White's In Memoriam tribute, and Travolta connected with Jamie Lee Curtis backstage and walked away with a brand new addition to the family, Curtis calling the good news a perfect tribute to the late great Betty White. That is one lucky dog. All right, next up, Keith Urban, the country music superstar, is channeling his inner pop diva on Monday. Urban sharing this amazing Adele cover. But I can't bring myself to swim when I am drowning in this silence. Baby, let me go. There you go. In a post on Instagram, Keith called Adele's easy on me lyrics, quote, divinely timed. Not bad there. Finally, Tom Hanks, the Hollywood icon, is out in Pittsburgh. He's shooting his next movie. And while spending some time on the East Coast, you may have noticed that Tom Hanks has been pulling some double duty. That's right. He's working the wedding circuit. Last week, the award-winning actor crashed one bride's pre-ceremony photo shoot, leaving her with probably the best candid photos for her wedding album she could ever imagine. And now he's taking things one step further. Tom Hanks recently answering the call to officiate a stranger's wedding. The bride, Chris Napasnik of Bellevue, Pennsylvania, knew Hanks was an ordained minister, reached out to him just to see if he would do the honors for her big day. And lo and behold, the big screen star came through. 
Wedding photographer Grace Ruiz told NBC News Hanks was so personable, funny, and kind during the entire wedding, calling it an unforgettable experience. It looks like if you're getting married and you find yourself in the Pittsburgh area, America's sweetheart Tom Hanks is available for all of your wedding needs. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Coming up next, WWE superstar Bianca Belair sizes up the competition at this weekend's big WrestleMania. Local well, media Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. WWE superstar Bianca Belair bested Sasha Banks at last year's WrestleMania, the first black women to face each other in the night's main event. Well, Belair is going to be back in the ring this weekend for WrestleMania 38, and she spoke to us about how she's feeling ahead of her big match. WrestleMania 37, I was able to be a part of a very unprecedented moment. Sasha Banks and I, we became the first two black females to ever main event WrestleMania. You could see the emotion in both women's faces. To be a part of that moment uh, is everything to me. And to be a part of a moment where it was more than just being about me or being about Sasha Banks, it was more than just being about us. It was about inspiring the world, inspiring women, men, boys, girls. It doesn't matter, it transcends across across our race, religion, genders, it doesn't matter. It was able to touch everyone, and it's a moment that's going to go down and live in history forever. Back down, women's champion, Bianca Belair! You know, the response to Sasha Banks and I made even at WrestleMania, it was all positive. Even going into it, we had fans creating hashtags uh, for us to main event WrestleMania. So the fans wanted it. So to be able to give the fans what they wanted and be able to deliver and have people still talking about that match, knowing that that, that match was so much bigger than the both of us and it in affected people and impacted people in such a positive way, that's what this is all about. We also won an SB off of that match. So to be able to be recognized in the world of sports um, off of a match where I main event with, with Sasha Banks is everything. You know, coming off of WrestleMania uh, last year, main eventing with Sasha Banks, having our fans back for the first time since the pandemic had happened and walking out of SmackDown as champion, um, you know, I, I'm riding off of that going into WrestleMania 38. I'll be competing against Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship on April 2nd in Dallas, Texas. And, um, you know, I made history last year, so I'm just looking to go back to back at WrestleMania and uh, walk out as champion, but this time walk out as Raw Women's Champion this year. Becky Lynch came into SummerSlam and beat me in 26 seconds, and she took the title from me, and she's had that title ever since. Uh, she's Raw Women's Champion now, and we've been going back and forth. Um, you know, for me, this, this is my redemption story going into WrestleMania 38. I have yet to actually perform uh, in front of a full full WrestleMania crowd. So this will be the first year that I'm able to do that uh, in a title match with Becky Lynch. So 
uh, our fans are everything and it's going to be really exciting to be uh, at WrestleMania in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. See, WrestleMania, um, it's amazing now because it's now for two nights. It'll be April 2nd and April 3rd. I'll be on April 2nd with Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. They'll be on as well going for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So the, the night is going to be full of some crazy, amazing, um, matches. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with, with Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Things are really heating up with them. Um, they have, they've had history ever, you know, they were, they were a part of the very first main, uh, main event of WrestleMania that, that the women were a part of. So they have a lot of history there. Ronda Rousey with, 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 with her, um, extensive background and, and Charlotte Flair with her being, being the champion multiple times. She's the most decorated, um, woman in WWE history. Uh, it's 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 going to be interesting. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. I think that it's going to be a brutal match. And said she's going to get hers here tonight at SummerSlam. Bianca Belair showed up. So I call myself the EST of WWE. That means that I am the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best, anything that good that ends in EST, that's what I am. And I'm all about just striving to be the absolute best B-E-S-T version of myself. My very first time with an entrance, I honestly just didn't know what to do with my hands. So this is where the, I do like a little bounce when I come out. Bianca Belair took out uh, Zelina Vega and Carmella last night, teaching them a lesson after the assault from two weeks ago, led by, of course, her opponent, Sasha Banks, during the contract signing. And then my braid is just right there. And I just like to twirl and skip and bounce to the ring. So that's really how it all came about. It's just a huge part of who I am. It's a part of, um, of who Bianca Belair is. And it's right there. And I like to just have fun and bounce and skip to the ring. And, and I like to whip my hair up in the air. So it's, it's kind of just a part of who I am. And it just happened naturally. My braid is my superpower and it, it definitely can be used as, as a weapon, but the key word is only when it's necessary. My number one rule is do not touch my hair, but if you do, I will use it. Becky Lynch going after the hair yet again. Been a continued strategy for Becky Lynch all throughout this match. Wow, Mid going to oh, run. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Times. Good grief. The braid um, initially was just as a way for me to stand out. And one day I was in a match and you know, the, the girls, the first thing they always try to do is go to my hair and pull my hair. And I was like, well, how can I get them to stop touching my hair? And so one day in a match, I threw it at a girl. It made this huge loud noise. The crowd went crazy. And I was able to capitalize off of that in the ring. And in that moment I realized, whoa, this is this is definitely can definitely be used to my advantage and not my disadvantage. And big thanks to Bianca, and of course, more importantly, good luck this weekend. We should mention that you can catch WrestleMania from the WWE on Peacock. And just ahead, the legacy of Hollywood legend Judy Garland, but this time through the eyes of her granddaughter. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Ukrainians who are 
are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And we're back here on Popstar Plus for Women's History Month. We're telling incredible stories of remarkable women through conversations with their granddaughters. Today's focus, the talented Judy Garland, who starred, of course, as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and her granddaughter told our Dylan Dreyer about the influence Miss Garland had on her life. We're back with our series, Generations Today, celebrating Women's History Month by sharing the stories of some legendary women as told by their grandchildren. It's such a fun way to learn more about these women. And this morning, we are taking a look back at a Hollywood icon. Judy Garland would have turned 100 this year. Her granddaughter, Vanessa O'Neill, never had the chance to meet the legendary actress, but her grandmother's legacy lives on through her family. I'm in awe, even being her own granddaughter. I'm so impressed and blown away that this four foot 11 little woman has this humongous voice. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Being Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz is her most legendary role, but for Judy Garland, being a grandmother may have been the role she most desired. Her excitement was seen on the Today Show back in 1967 as she sat with her two children, Lorna and Joe. Looking forward to being a grandmother? That's gonna happen one of these can't days. Can't wait. Really? I can't wait. I'll let, I want her to have a baby immediately, and then she can see the baby for only 25 minutes and I'll be a babysitter. Makes me tear up a little just hearing that because obviously we didn't get to see her. In Vanessa O'Neill's home, Judy is known as Triple G as she would now be a great grandma to Vanessa's two young sons. You're a great singer. To the world, Judy is an icon of Hollywood's golden era, starring in more than 31 films like A Star is Born, Easter Parade with Fred Astaire. Right, left, right, good. And Meet Me in St. Louis. She was also a Broadway legend and an acclaimed recording artist who was the first woman to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. It's really incredible how she paved the way for so many other women down the line. I always say that I have such strong women in my family who aren't afraid to speak up and be their most authentic self. And I know that that sometimes isn't probably easy, but I hope to pass that along to my kids. For Vanessa's family, Judy's ruby slippers are some big shoes to fill. When did it register with you that your grandmother was somebody truly special? I must have been about five or six, and my mom was performing in Vegas. And I saw, you know, like my grandma on top of the slot machines, like turning, <laughs> like a huge <laughs> bottle of her. Vanessa credits her mother, actress and singer Lorna Luft, with keeping her grandmother's memory alive. I watched my mom perform so much of my grandmother's music you know, live and sitting in the wings. Lorna. Lorna wrote about life with Judy in her memoir, Me and My Shadows, from 1998, saying of Judy, everything I know about being a good mother to my children, I learned from her. What traits would you say have, have been passed down through the generations to you? I definitely think our sense of humor. <laughs> it's, it's a huge, huge part of our personality to make things fun and funny, but also to get through hard times. I like to laugh. I like to have a bag of popcorn, go on a roller coaster now and then. But behind the lights and stage, Judy was often troubled and struggled with addiction. Did your mom ever talk with you about the bad sides or the downsides that fortunately your grandmother went through? Not until I got a little bit like of age. I do have the addiction gene myself. I'm seven years sober. And I really do feel like it's a genetic trait in my family. Vanessa's grandmother suffered with her own condition in silence. Judy Garland died of a drug overdose in 1969 at the young age of 47. My grandma was living in a time where there really wasn't much help. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't AA and these programs and people didn't really know what, what addiction was. Vanessa bypassed show business altogether and today is a personal trainer and nutrition coach. The health and wellness industry has helped me so much, not only with my physical health and 
body image, but my mental health, 1,000%. Her home is in Southern California with her husband, Patrick, their five-year-old son, Logan, and a brand new baby boy, Kieran, who was just born somewhere under the rainbow. A sign, Vanessa says, that Judy was there. You could see behind the little bassinet that my son was in, sure enough, just a big rainbow right there. And it really makes you feel like, hey, like you are sending me a sign. Thank you. That's amazing. Don't you get chills Incredible. seeing the rainbow? I have the chills right now. It doesn't rain much in San Diego. To get a rainbow is, is hard to do. Yeah. Um, the, the baby she just had two weeks ago um, is the fourth great-grandchild for Judy. Vanessa's brother, Jesse, also has two children. And, and by the way, um, you know, in that piece, you'll notice that Liza Minnelli is yep. her aunt. Yeah. And we actually just saw her on stage with Lady Gaga there um, at the Oscars. So the, the first time we've seen her in quite some time. So... Yeah, this greatness runs in the family. Pretty cool. Still to come, we got a great throwback visit with Hollywood icon Christopher Walken next on Popstar Plus. Local media Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. down. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back, everybody. Christopher Walken turns 79 years young this week. The Deer Hunter, Catch Me If You Can, Hairspray. He's had so many memorable and great roles, and we'd like to share his visit here to today, back in 1992. In a career that now stretches over 30 years, Christopher Walken has earned a reputation as an actor who's good at being bad. An Oscar winner with over 100 stage and screen roles to his credit, he's cast as a villain once again this summer, a guy named Max Shrek, poised to oppose Batman in the season's biggest movie. Christopher Walken, good morning. Morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, Max Shrek, as opposed to Catwoman, as opposed to Penguin, is, is not a character with whom readers of Batman comics might be familiar. Who is the guy? Max Schreck is uh, the name of the actor who played the, um, the vampire in the original Dracula movie, Nos Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And um, he's named after him, though it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with him. He's, he's a uh, businessman. He, he's the uh, owner and uh, CEO of Schreck's department store, which is the Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Alexander's of Gotham City. He's the, one of the last men on earth to wear spats on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very lavish production, um, it, it, but essentially it is a cartoon. Did you approach it as serious drama, or did you try to add a cartoon quality to Max Shrek? Odd as it may seem, Max, we're both perceived as monsters. In a show like this, where there are wigs and costumes and big sets and special effects and so forth. Of course, it takes it out of a, uh, a kind of naturalistic uh, context. Frankly, I feel it's a bum rap. I'm a businessman. Tough, yes. Shrewd, okay. But that does not make me a monster. Don't embarrass yourself, Max. I know all about you. But the feeling of being in it is much, uh, much more of, of theater, really, for me. I've worked a lot in the theater. Get the picture. 
What is that supposed to hypnotize me? No, just give you a splitting headache. Warner Brothers is is hoping and and betting that this film not only does box office, huge box office for the year, but rivals the, the greatest returns of all time. Um, what are your own expectations for? I, in my, I've, I've been doing it a long time, and I try to avoid uh, expectations, um, just hope for the best. My feeling about uh, um, acting in movies is that what I hope for is that the m movie that I just did is going to get me another one. Mm. And, uh, were you a fan of the first one? Yes, I did. I liked it a lot. I was noting when I got here that, uh, that I was looking forward to this interview because I, I've admired your work a long time, and we were supposed to talk uh, uh, before another movie of yours, and it, it never materialized. I, I was, um, your reputation is that you don't enjoy these kinds of things. Is it accurate? You mean interviews? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, I, I am more comfortable uh, doing uh, other people's dialogue. And um, there's something about knowing your lines and knowing what you're thinking and having a character to play. Yeah. I don't think that's unusual for actors. Um, um, an actor is someone who, uh, who enjoys um, uh, uh, embodying another person, I suppose. Do you find it strange that people may be as fascinated with Christopher Walken as they might be with any character you play? I, the, I think the characters I play are probably more colorful than I am. I noted at the top that, that, that over the years you've, you've developed this, this aura of, of playing guys who are, if not evil, certainly slightly off-setter. Yeah. Um, is, is that something you've cultivated or has it just kind of happened that way? I think that movies are, are so expensive to make that it, it just makes sense from a producer's angle, a kind of marketplace way, that if you have demonstrated that you can do something uh, effectively, that you'll be asked to do it again. I think that's why that happens. And, and I'm lucky, really, to have uh, 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 any kind of ball rolling. If it's, if it's villains and twisted people, then fine, you know, so long as I'm working. It is nice to break it up sometimes and, and do... Um, to do different kinds of things. I'd like to do romantic things and um, uh, maybe a picture with a woman and jokes and happy ending and all that. A final note, um, it, it's also clear from your track record that you're a guy who quickly moves from one project to another, that you'll mm. do a movie, and if there's no movie to do, then you'll do a play. Yeah. Why do you work so much? Well, because uh, I really like uh, to work. And uh, for me, it's the best time that I have uh, Working is, is uh, the best time I have. When I'm not working, I'm always worrying about what's next and trying to get another thing. I'm on the phone trying to do things. Uh, I, I don't have hobbies. Uh, I don't like to travel much. As an actor, I get to travel uh, to fascinating places all over the world and actually get to live there. I lived in Venice uh, a year ago for three months. You don't get to do that on vacation. So when I have time off, I, I'm not inclined to get on a plane and go somewhere. I, I have a house in the country and I tend to stay there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, think about what to do next. Mm -hmm. As noted, I'm an admirer. Christopher Walken, thank you. Thanks. And a big happy early birthday to Mr. Christopher Walken. Thanks for being with us for another Pop Star Plus tomorrow. We've got the scoop on Starstruck on HBO Max. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.
you ever just look around and say, I can't believe we did this? Yes, totally. That was like the light bulb moment. I got up there and I just said I quit my job and started this company. And I just kept going. It was a lot of testing and learning. There's been a lot of tears along the way. We can actually change the world. When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it. Hello everyone and welcome to She Made It, where we celebrate female entrepreneurs who are shaking up their industries, creating strong brands, and climbing their way to the top to lead successful businesses. For the next half hour, our She Made It Home Sweet Home Edition will highlight nine incredible women whose businesses inspire us to make our homes happier places. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list, featuring four small businesses I've had my eye on, from luxury pajamas to a soap that makes hand washing fun for your kids. Trust me, you're going to want to shop and support. So let's get started. Our first founder built a company called Claire, named for the Latin root meaning bright and brilliant. Those two words accurately describe Claire CEO Nicole Gibbons and the colors she's bringing into homes as she reinvents the paint shopping experience. Take a look. We live in a day and age where you can literally buy everything online, but shopping for paint was so difficult for people. So it's a problem that I wanted to solve. Nicole Gibbons is shaking things up in the design world. She's the founder and CEO of Claire a direct-to-consumer paint company delivering high-quality color and supplies straight to your door. Your journey to get to this point um, has been all over the place in such a wonderful way. Yeah, it's been a long, winding road. So I started my career out in public relations, um, but while in that job, I was always passionate about interior design, so I started a decorating blog as more or less of a side hustle hobby. After working in PR for 10 years, Nicole left her job in 2013 to pursue her passion full time, setting up her own design firm and landing a hosting gig on Homemade Simple. I'm so excited to show you the paint color. A home decor show on the Oprah Winfrey Network. All of the design personas that I saw on television were so much older than me, didn't really reflect the kind of style that I found appealing. And so my goal was to kind of be that for a younger generation of people who are really passionate about their homes. What was it like having Oprah as your boss? All in all, an incredible experience and then a huge bonus to be able to say that Oprah was my boss. <laughs> After three seasons on the show, Nicole wanted to make a lasting impact on the design industry. And as luck would have it, helping friends choose paint colors led to a stroke of genius. The website was a hot mess. There was no easy way to find the product. There were thousands and thousands of little pixelated squares. That's when the wheels started spinning. I kept thinking about like, why is it not easy to buy paint online? Nicole was determined to simplify the paint shopping process priming herself with all the necessary research to face investors. It is not easy starting a paint company in an industry where the businesses that dominated have been around for 200 years. These are multi-billion dollar businesses, a completely male dominated industry. So here I am, this you know young black woman saying, I'm gonna start a paint company. You know, Everyone's it, like, good luck with that. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So it was definitely an uphill battle and then raising venture capital in an ecosystem where black women get two tenths of 1% of the venture dollars. Um, Say that again. So two tenths of 1% of in venture, venture capital. capital. So how did you go upon raising money? I knocked on lots of doors, took lots and lots of meetings, got lots of no's to get to those yeses. After successfully raising $2 million in capital, Nicole launched Claire in 2018. Claire makes paint shopping super easy. We have curated colors, our samples, our peel and stick. So the traditional way of buying, uh, sampling paint requires, yes, you've got some. So you literally just peel those things off like a sticker, stick it right on your wall. They're non-damaging. You can see exactly what the color looks like in one step with no mess. You don't have to wait for paint to dry. I just I did it. <laughs> yeah, right? These days, the paint company is experiencing a bright spot during the pandemic, with sales up by 200%, even catching the eye of Queen Bee herself. Oh my gosh, that was the, the, the biggest surprise ever, to have the Beyonce stamp of approval is incredible. I, I've done lots of things and accomplished a lot in my career, but having Beyonce shout me out on her website was definitely a highlight. 
Incredible, right? And Beyonce approved. What more could you ask for? Now, since our story aired, Nicole was included in Forbes Next 1000 list, highlighting standout entrepreneurs who are redefining the American dream. She also launched three new Claire colors and raised a whopping, get this, $8 million for Claire's Series A round to fund the company's next phase of growth. So exciting. So what's next for Claire? Expanding into exterior paints, wall coverings, and more. Go you. Coming up, one go-getter who can build you a home and another who can help you decorate it. I can't wait for you to meet these next entrepreneur superstars. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Well, this next She Made It entrepreneur literally built her business from the ground up. She rose through a male-dominated industry to start her own company, Marnie Custom Homes. Founder Marnie Arsler pinched every penny to put a down payment on her first flip. And she is now one of her area's top builders, delivering her clients their dream homes. I first spoke to Marnie back in 2019. Take a look. For Marnie Ausler, building is in her blood. Her father and grandfather were builders, and Marnie grew up on job sites. Growing up, he would drop my brother and I off on job sites and with like a broom and a bucket, and he's like, all right, I'll see you at five. After college, Marnie moved to Bethany Beach, Delaware, and gave real estate a try. I was just amazed at who could even buy these second homes. I'd never been in an oceanfront home in my life or an ocean side home. And I just said, you know, I want to do this too. And I saved up money. I ate peanut butter sandwiches for two years straight. And why not the jelly? It, it was too much money. I literally had it down to like the penny. She used that money to buy her first home, but it needed some work. I remember sending a picture of it to my dad and he was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I didn't have any money to fix it up. So I had to do it all myself. And that's when I realized how much I knew. And then I sold it in nine months and made over $100,000. And that's when I was like, wow, this is cool and this is a lot of fun. <laughs> and what did your dad say? <laughs> oh yeah, and then he says, oh, well, you might be onto something. She launched Marnie Custom Homes in 2007. I assume that there have been struggles along the way. And you know, you've said as a woman, there have been both positives and negatives. People really paid no attention to me. Um, you know, the, the competitors, because they're like, you know, here's this girl. She doesn't know what she's doing. And that was hard. I mean, I was definitely not treated well, you know, in the beginning. So because we're gonna not have, we're gonna have a But soon room. Marnie's tenacity and work spoke for itself. Marnie even built the first certified green home in the state of Delaware. And I had no idea it had never been done before. I was learning all of this different construction methods, teaching the subcontractors different ways to build, to make things more sustainable and energy efficient. That is now standard, but in 2008, we were like way ahead of the curve. Was there a moment when you finished a house or a final 
picture went up or is there there's there an aha moment that you have the other day was actually interesting because my dad came in the office he hasn't been in the office in probably a couple of years now he was looking at all the, the pictures around and he turns to me and he was like you made it oh i know oh you have tears in your eyes i totally understand that yeah it's been a a long road <laughs> We got a tour of the latest sprawling custom oceanfront home Marnie is currently working on for a client. All right, here we go. Come on in. How far along are we? So we just drywalled. So we're about halfway finished. We have a big rooftop deck with a hot tub, a big, huge screened-in porch off of the kitchen. So they, they do a lot of grilling. We have a bar for cocktails, kitchen. So it's all right here. This is what it's about, huh? That's right. That's right. I could spend my summer here. <laughs> yeah, right. Over the years, Marnie's team has expanded, but she still gives each home she builds her personal touch defying expectations. Marnie built the career of her dreams. So this is something. Yeah, this is, this is it right here. I mean, like the holy grail. So it's a dream come true. Since we spoke, this such a treat home where we filmed with her for our segment has been completed, as well as other projects like Surfside and Can't Beat the View. And just last year, Marnie was a finalist for the 2021 Custom Home Builder of the Year by the National Association of Home Builders. What an amazing woman. Well, once you have your dream home, you have to decorate it, of course. Have you ever looked at furniture in a catalog or online and you just couldn't picture it in your own house? Enter Modsy, a San Francisco tech company that lets you make over your space without lifting a finger. Take a look. As soon as this idea kind of planted in my brain, I, I couldn't drop it. I was like waking up every night, every morning. So finally, I like, I'm gonna go start a company. I'm gonna start my next company. I have this idea. And within like a month, I was off to the races. Shauna Tellerman came up with the idea for Modsy, an online interior design service based in San Francisco, when she got tired of her house not feeling like a home. You're with your husband trying to put your home together and you're on Pinterest, like most people, and it's a mess. We had this like long, awkward space. We didn't know what to do on the walls, therefore we didn't know what rug to pick out, and we didn't know how to arrange the sofa. Shauna gave up and left her home disorganized and undecorated for a year. What do you think makes it so difficult for a consumer to pull the trigger on that couch or that piece? Do you think it's because they can't visualize it in the room and that's what this solves? That is definitely a big piece of the problem. When you're buying a piece of furniture, it's never in isolation. There's a lot that goes into that decision-making process. Shauna's own struggle with decorating led her to question, what if you could see a remodel of your own home with multiple options and ideas in virtual reality, and then have the whole plan land in your inbox? I remember I was sitting at our dining room table and I remember like flipping through the catalog and I just had this moment looking at this like beautiful picture. I wanted to live in that room, but the room looked nothing like my room. And you're like, I know how to actually make that happen. Yes, totally. At college, Shauna had already stepped into the world of virtual reality and never looked back. For me, it was just this like aha moment where I got to see that you can blend graphics and art and technology in 3D. She eventually went to work using her 3D skills in Silicon Valley, but this marathon runner couldn't shake the feeling there was another finish line to cross. In 2015, Shauna received funding and Modsy was launched and currently produces over 500,000 designs every month. We do basically what a designer does. So we're going to ask you questions like, you know, what is your style? What are your functional needs for the space? What colors do you like? What's your budget for this room? The step-by-step -step process ranges from $79 for a basic design to $229 for multiple rooms. Once you upload the pictures of your home, a designer creates a 3D version of your exact room and then you can click on any product in the design. You can swap it. So if you wanted to try multiple sofas, you could try multiple sofas. If you wanted to move into a 3D editor, you could do that and actually trade, try different layouts. All the items in the design are shoppable from a variety of stores. And it's really, a, for you, I would assume, a rewarding process because you're building somebody's home with them. Yes, it is so rewarding. The stories that we hear and the people's lives we get to touch, when we get it right, like we change somebody's life. 
such cool technology. Now, the prices start at $159 for one room or simple design projects and then go into the 400s for multiple rooms, but you're not required to buy anything. From the time our story aired, Mazi grew their revenue by over 250% while tripling their furniture and decor catalog. This month, Mazi launched Reno, a new service that uses virtual reality to design and build spaces that don't even exist yet, allowing customers to visualize home improvements before construction begins. Even more wonderful, Shanna tells us she welcomed a baby girl to her family last July. Congratulations. Well, coming up, you have the dream house, the decor. Now it's time to throw a party, my favorite. We'll tell you about the no fuss party in a box that you can pack up and send right back. Dirty dishes and all. And what's a party without cocktails? We'll meet two friends mixing it up in the beverage business. Fun fact, they're a staple on Al Roker's bar card. Hmm, you won't want to miss that one. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to She Made It. All right, who doesn't love a good party? Our next entrepreneur, Marielle Shortell, sure does. She pivoted her event and party production company in a new direction when the pandemic halted in-person events by bringing the party right into people's homes. For the past 16 years, I've always loved to entertain. And boy, do I love a good party. In 2014, I started a full service event production company based in Washington, DC. I've designed big galas and hosted international soirees for hundreds, even thousands of people. And I always wanted to deliver the same experience to the masses at home. Then earlier this year, the pandemic completely paralyzed the event industry. It was devastating. We lost 95% of our yearly revenue within a month. But I sprang into action. With most people at home, why not bring the party to them for a fraction of the cost? So I refocused my team's efforts to bring the event in a box concept to life. We created, purchased, and shot a variety of hosting collections, from table runners to candles. And in just eight weeks, Hestia Harlow was born, a hyper-curated event rental service, delivering all of your entertaining needs straight to your door. Since our launch in July, we have shipped over 5,000 place settings, and Hestia Harlow is providing the perfect way to bring joy back into the home. 
Well, they definitely succeeded in that. And cheers to Marielle for having the foresight to make such a smart pivot. In their first year, Hestia Harlow made over $750,000 in sales. And with our story giving them a little boost around the holidays, their Thanksgiving and Christmas collections even sold out. And many of those customers have been repeat renters since then. I love to hear that. Now we have another company that can up your entertaining game. Meet Katie Williams and Jenny Lucas, two friends who decided to shake up the beverage industry. Katie and I have been friends for over 20 years. We first met as freshmen at the University of Virginia. Go Hoos! Through the years, we met up frequently, over cocktails, of course. But Jenny and I weren't crazy about the calories and sugar that came with it. So we tried to solve this at home, mixing our vodka tonics with club soda to get the right taste. One night while out on the town, we ordered our usual vodka half soda, half tonic. When the bartender said, you want a Sonic, a light bulb went off in our heads. We wanted to create a line of premium, all natural mixers with half the calories and sugar. Neither of us had a beverage background, but we dove into research and worked with a food scientist to develop our flavor profiles. In 2017, we finally launched Navy Hill, selling our cases of mixers to local businesses out of the back of our cars. Our kids helped out too, while our husbands moonlit as bartenders at trade shows. Now, in just three years, Navy Hill is available in 2,000 stores in 30 states. Cocktail hour will never be the same. Cheers to healthier drinking. All right, after their appearance on the show, Navy Hill received thousands of online orders from all over the country, and one of their biggest repeat customers, drum roll please, our friend Al Roker, so you know it's approved. And their newest product now is a grapefruit club soda. Get this, it's only five calories for the whole bottle, no sugar, and makes a delicious Paloma. And now I'm going to introduce you to two more amazing women helping keep our homes perfectly clean. First up, Samira Farr, founder of Number Two Toilet Paper. Samira is on a mission to wipe away, I couldn't help myself, the competition and save the planet all at the same time. Sounds easy enough, right? Take a look. My name is Samira Farr, and to me, true luxury is living in a land plush with trees rather than cutting them down to make toilet paper. That's why I created Number Two, a stylish toilet paper that not only gives you a clean wipe, but also helps preserve our forests. In 2017, after selling my first business, I began to research the toilet paper industry. It felt outdated. I was shocked to find that TV can be made from alternative fibers like bamboo, and that there aren't a lot of brands that don't use plastic packaging. I also learned that bamboo can grow at a much faster rate than trees, making it a way more eco-friendly option. I launched Number 2 Toilet Paper in 2019 and have grown from selling only online to selling from bigger home goods stores like Urban Outfitters and Lowe's Home Improvement. Customers love the strength and quality of the teepee, as well as the stylish patterns. But most importantly, they are thrilled to be saving the planet one wipe at a time. And since we spoke with Samira back in July of 2020, their subscriptions have skyrocketed and they are planning on launching paper towels and facial tissues later this year. Just like their toilet paper, they will be 100% bamboo and plastic free and will also come in fun prints to spice up your home. Our next entrepreneur is Angela Richardson, founder and CEO of Pure Home. Since the pandemic put a spotlight on the need for household cleaning products and disinfectants, more and more of us have been paying attention to the chemicals inside the stuff we use to sanitize our homes. That's where Angela and her line of non-toxic cleaning products come in. Take a look. Eight years ago, I committed to living an eco-conscious life, and it all started because of my hair. I decided to go natural, but I couldn't believe how many hair products were made up of harmful ingredients. It made me wonder about everyday household items like laundry detergent, and I discovered it contained even more chemicals. It was time for a change, but all natural products at the store were costly and oftentimes unavailable. So I learned how to create my own, making everything from soap to lotions. In 2015, I decided to create the products I didn't see, spending the next 18 months doing research and teaching myself chemistry. Farming with my own savings, I launched Pure Home in 2017, creating non-toxic, effective cleaners for every household, all from a tiny warehouse 
On average, I formulate hundreds of gallons of products each week, and I'm excited to share my love for clean ingredients with our customers. So inspiring, right? Pure Home reported a huge uptick in orders since our segment first aired. That makes me so happy. Their laundry detergent was even named Parents Magazine 2021 Best Laundry Detergent. And they also received $10,000 from Beyonce's Bay Good Impact Fund. How cool is that? They also launched new products, including eco-friendly concentrated laundry packs. Good for them. Coming up, four women-owned small businesses that will add a little life and light to your home. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. My name is this. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back. I have even more brands from female-founded companies that I'm so excited to share with you on my She Made It It list today. I'm bringing you fabulous businesses that will brighten up your life in the most important place, your home. Starting with loungewear and pajama brand Lake. After meeting during college through their now husbands, founders Ann Reed Lattimore was making her way in the healthcare industry and Cassandra Cannon was going to become a doctor. Both were on a break from work, experiencing being first-time moms and frustrated by the lack of quality in their pajamas. So, in 2014, starting from scratch, they sampled hundreds of pajamas and created a small batch of samples using a soft Pima cotton made in Peru. Eight years later, Lake has established itself as a place for premier pajamas. How great are these? Super soft and super chic. All right, let's move on to a hand soap soap pen that is great for kids and helps them effectively wash their hands by encouraging them to draw all over them. Co-founders Shabam Isser and Amanat Anand met at Parsons School of Design where they learned that more than 50% of infectious diseases that leads to fatalities among kids under five can be avoided by the simple act of washing hands with soap. The unique formula is designed so that drawings only rinse off once a child has washed their hands. They're available as a three pack for $15.99 on Amazon or on their website. What a cool idea and a way to get your kids in shape. Next up, Isabel Sousa Ceramics. Isabel is a ceramic artist from Massachusetts. She started her business just two years ago after graduating from Syracuse University. When the pandemic began, she noticed an increase from customers wanting to shop locally. Her community rallied behind her and purchased her mugs to enjoy their coffee as they worked from home. In 2021, she collaborated with designer 3.1 Philip Lim and Starbucks for their line of reusable drinkware inspired by the beauty of the natural world for International Women's Day. Isabel's creations, which now include both mugs and beautiful earrings, we have some right here, are available on madewell.com. Every piece is handcrafted by her in her Cape Cod studio, and you know that every piece is made with love. All right, last up. 
Perry Boyce Candles. You know I love a great candle. Perry is a Brooklyn-based hand-poured candle company founded by Tracy Boyce. She started her business at local street fairs, but when the pandemic hit, she pivoted to e-commerce and launched on Amazon as part of their Black Accelerator program. Tracy set out to create a line of luxury candles at affordable prices. This spring, she's releasing six new scents, including Coffee and Break, Jasmine and Blanc, and Lavender and Fields. I can tell you, if it were smell vision you'd be really into these. Such incredible women and businesses that we want to support. So thank you so much for watching. And remember to shop all these businesses. Scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen or head to today.com slash shop. I'm Jill Martin, and I can't wait to see you next time. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We are going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurants, Shuka and Shuket. I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. Chef Aisha. You know, oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Shook okay, perfect. Shawarma. Well, let's cheers first. Oh. I have a drink here. Oh, where's my, oh, what is this This fancy is a gizzo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit and seltzer. And if we were feeling like getting a little litty, we'd have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. For we're gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat. We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have some lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your... Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so if... Cooking show over, <laughs> this is incredible. This is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How all, much? All of it. It's like baking, where they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? the wet. No, that's fine. As long as it's combined. But right now we're going to add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Four. Okay. So well, right this now is, that was paprika. This is cumin. Cumin. That's and this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. Mm, it is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was going to guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really going to give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're going to whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize how beautiful this, this marinade. Is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're going to do the onion. So okay, wait, one. I know how to do this. Okay. What you want to do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the... Chicken. So right now we're going to use chicken thighs, okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to dump the chicken oh, right onto our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. That Christmas. Oh, exactly. Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to cut this first so I can show you. If you notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C, and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you mm -hmm. feeling? Good. Is it like... Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that. 
knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut, and then when I do it, I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. You Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Now, now your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves, because then I just don't feel it. all gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. You're, you're full you're massage kidding. here. Look at this. They're living the their best life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there if you don't mind grabbing it that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 48 hours later, 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. No, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delish. Yes. And I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why so, don't I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. is that all right? Yep. Oh, okay. And then you are going to use your tongs spread to okay. spread them out, yeah, right? right. But like, does each guy have to live in his own little world? No, nah, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now, does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's there, not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven. But it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a French place. French fries? I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. I'm so to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay. We anywhere. have mayo. A couple of And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. okay. So you have lemon juice there. Yeah. To your lemon left. Lemon juice, your lemon okay. juice. Okay. And then the next thing you're gonna do is gonna grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Ooh, now this is have scary. Have you done that before? I have, and I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so so I'm gonna, put that. the whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Yeah, see, yeah it's so close. scary. Like, am I, am I doing like this? You are. Back Can I just forth? show you something though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this, rest it on here, yeah. this oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the end. So you could kind of oh, that's a better just do way it to three do it. or four yeah. times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. And let's turn it around, should be all good. Mm -hmm. And that was perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. Now if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, no. But then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Okay, and we're gonna add the dry spices now. Oh, oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I'd have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, a mm. half a teaspoon. Okay. And next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil do the trick. Oh like they cover all the sins. Huh? All the sins. Okay. There we go. That's okay. Nice. Okay. Good. Okay. And Did then I we have our all? salt. No salt. How much salt? One, one, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. How would you tell if this is good or not? I learned something. And what was you it? You must taste it. And here, <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm going to taste it, too. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. good. Do you think now it's you good? Can, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. 
And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're gonna serve it in because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart, okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this is mm -hmm. just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessive about clean plate club here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh, so if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken, we're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. Cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall prom receive. As promised, we're ha we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. Let's just try and this, it out. We're just gonna have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this. Oh cooking. my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For our next trick, homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? You could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm going to have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. We're going to show you exactly that, that how, it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're going to open the blades mm -hmm. here. Okay. And now we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. Now, see, so I'm this is, going to get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out and hold it by its edges, because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini. Cabbage would be good in here, too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. You can sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments, and we're not going to use that right now. Okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's going to puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're going to throw so them in here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chicken, one half cup tahini paste. So you're going to take oh, that, it's not that your small, with your small little uh, spatula. Mm -hmm because you want to get every uh, oh, single little maybe morsel is, of that out. Maybe it is a little pasty. It could work with it's, this. It's viscous, yeah. Okay, that's Okay, so that. your tahini is in, mm -hmm. and then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Right. Okay, Rotate. olive oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay, you can put that in there. Perfect. And then you have salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those Yes. How much? You guys, what, you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make but it how rain. how do I know that? Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch. Okay. Okay? So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know That's what that, a lot. That, right, but you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. So just so this way you know 
This is where you know what it feels like. Okay. All right, I'm so gonna put that on your board. Oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we're gonna do a little bit over the left shoulder because you know we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? We walk out of here. Today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let me just. Oh boy. Oh boy. Stand clear. So what I'm gonna do? Do I need do, to cover this? Is no, it gonna no, come no, exploding out? Hit this button. It's a pulse. That says off. Ah. Okay. Good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pulse, when I have my own, just on it. So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. Like have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around, which I'm gonna do this time mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of flip uh, them on their top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, okay? So, have to go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is... One cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's going to hold its peak. Look good. Yeah. You see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like. It's and now smooth. you can see if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly. Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right. So time to stop. And right. You're going to have it. an intervention. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh, okay, so okay. let's taste it. Mm -hmm. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it. Mm -hmm. Lift that up. My... Now, Let's... how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, now and the same gonna... thing, you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yep, let's do the All spice over first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is yeah, that too beautiful. heavy? beautiful. No, 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 keep it. going. Okay. Mm. And you're going to fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. seriously. How beautiful is that? Oh, my gosh, that? that is gorge. All right. So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little uh, celery stick? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef tasting. Oh, yes. Oh, that. I love that. And then we'll put that a little much, bit. That much, huh? Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah, why not? Look at this. If we're going to do I it. I mean, come to mama. Yeah. Okay, oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh, my gosh. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
If there is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Fancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. That's great. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong suit. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut, so that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around. That it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so you're gonna pinch it. You feel it tight. I do. Right. Put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they're so small. Oh, interesting. This, I I always take the skin really? off. Really? But yeah, but that's just I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the 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 cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm gonna cut it. Cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then things. I would just cut them into half ounce, half inch mm -hmm. little pieces. Now, now would that, you do it like that, or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive, <laughs> because again, we want to be safe, and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I think so I'm just... doing it up. <laughs> <laughs> so you want them cut side down, because now they're not going to roll away from you. Oh, right, okay. right, And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay, we're gonna add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good uh, fat content, mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then, last but not least, would be our feta. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey, and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. And I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I just kind of figure people can add more if they right. so desire. How's that? Perfect. Good. Perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you can show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it. You and know this it. guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're going to cut a little bit of the bottom off like that. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it, you got it. There right. you go. I guess I just got to be a They'll little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're going to cut this in half. You're going to take the knife. You're going to put it in as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? In the beginning. Got it? Okay. God. Yeah. Good, good. See, now I'm like okay. stuck. Hold and on. This guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So put yeah. your hand flat. Mm -hmm. And now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. <laughs> go ahead. You almost got it. Where's the chainsaw? <laughs> Can I get okay, saw it on the other side? Okay, let me help you for a second. Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're gonna take that out, okay. okay? And then when you get to this point, you're gonna take your knife, yeah. you're gonna go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would wanna do. Okay. I'd wanna be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's, oh, ouch, darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without, no, it was just a little tap, okay. just a little So wait, hold tap. on, hold, but let's do it together so you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Then Starting to see. We're gonna go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay. Now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good. See, so you did it. Who'd think this would be the hardest part? Okay. So let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're gonna okay. all right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. Okay, you wanna get the Where's bottom? my friend? Okay, there we go. Mm. There's the friend. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now so we I'm going to show you blades. how to use these guys. All right. Okay. One is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay. So you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't know. Enough. Okay. There. Okay. All right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that. Okay. So okay. it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh. We're going to put that in here. I would have put it together. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're gonna turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. My heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay. 
Okay. And then you're going to put that in there. There you go. Oh. Look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in here. There you go. Get in here. Yeah, good. So we're going to shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. And we're going to wait for the blade to completely stop spinning. Yes. Right? And we're going to open this. Mm -hmm. And you see that in the inside? Mm hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. So I get it. We're going to take, if you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. What's this for, anyway? For, this for the shawarma. Oh. We need a fresh crunch okay. front top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. You're take the top out. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let's go. All right. So this is going to give you more of like a slice okay. of cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. gonna, just put a little Yeah, just put a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. You Look at it. Isn't that friendly? Perfect. Okay. Okay. Yum. We have one more thing, the star of the show. The chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at this. Man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof the recipe when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here, mm -hmm. see how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. Just put it right in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, and mm -hmm. can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? So this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? So this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You I can't know, believe I did you this. You nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare okay, it? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help but make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm going to give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug. Mm. And here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on here. Come to me for those white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's yeah. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That's, that is, here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread right. some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro, serrano chilies, and cardamom. Mm. I wanna get some of these onions some of and stuff in there, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with minted cilantro? Do I just shove it in just there? Just shove it in there. Okay. And then, of course, we have to bring over our cabbage. Mm -hmm. Let me turn this around okay. so you could have your so half. I'll just do my. And I'll have mine. Yeah. We'll just kind of sprinkle it's it. The rip in and there. dip. You know. I mean, it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Mm -hmm. Come. Do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then we'll have to do just a little. Just a little on I your was first bite, ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you so much. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. 
Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. Mm. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag the mm -hmm. I love it. Mmm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match, and no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. We are starting with a first look at a special exhibit right down in our nation's capital. It's really cool. It's a groundbreaking and empowering installation at the Smithsonian honoring female power players in STEM. NBC senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson is there. Hey, Hallie, it's a big day in D.C. Hey, gang, it is so exciting. And let me just, can I blow your mind with a statistic here? If you look at the biggest cities in America, let's say the top 10, the top 12, guess how many statues of women are in those cities? Oh, Only about a half dozen. Well, guess what? That changes today. And boy, are they making up for lost time. Take a look at this. More than 80 statues here in the Smithsonian of real women, real incredible women in STEM. In just a second, we're going to do a live reveal of another statue. But first, take a look at how this all came to be. Consider the statues lining America's parks and city streets. What's missing? Women. When our families and our kids are walking around, looking at the people that are held up as role models, they're not seeing anyone that looks like them. And we knew we wanted to fix that problem. We're going to be 3D full body scanning you. Now, the If Then initiative to support and honor women in STEM has created the biggest collection of statues depicting women ever assembled. Good. Nice. This is gorgeous. 120 3D printed statues of real women, trailblazers in science, tech, math, and engineering, standing proudly at the Smithsonian in our nation's capital. I am part of a team of scientists trying to save endangered species from extinction. Women like Ray Wynn Grant, an ecologist and National Geographic explorer. It's all to inspire the next generation of STEM leaders. If we show little girls all these amazing women doing amazing work in this world, then each of them are gonna know that they too can grow up and change the world. I wish I got to see this when I was a little kid. Reminds me of how important representation is. Not just about my work, but about the work of everyone who looks like me. Talk to me, not the camera. Hi, oh. uh, we're, we're back and we are live here with some of the, by the way, incredible women whose statues are featured here in the garden. And we're about to reveal live one of the statues of Ray Wynn Grant, which we are so excited about. Ellen Stofan, I want to start with you. How much does this project mean to be able to do, to be able to have for people in Washington? Well, as a scientist myself, you know, at the Smithsonian, we tell stories of women from the past, all their great accomplishments, which is so important because girls need that inspiration. What I love about these statues, these are women behind us who are changing the world right now. And we're so proud to have them here at the Smithsonian to inspire the next generation of explorers and dreamers and scientists and engineers. One of those women, of course, is Ray, who's here. OK, so that is your statue. Yes, it is. You haven't actually seen it yet. Not yet. We're about to reveal it. But can you give me a sense of what's going through your mind at the moment? Because you are on the forefront, as are all of these amazing women who are here, of trying to inspire people like your daughter, Zuri. You know, even your mom, Tony, who's here with you today. You know, what comes to mind for me is that we do this science to make the world a better place. And so it's amazing to also be honored and recognized and kind of be seen as heroes 
for doing that work. I think it's important for everyone to see. Have you felt that way your whole career, or do you feel like you've come a little bit of a long way in the last couple of years? Oh my gosh. Well, I have to say that if then initiative here has really amplified women in science to make us visible and make us in the media and just really give us this amazing presence so that little girls everywhere can aspire to do something like this, or at least know that they can. It's really made a big difference. Zuri, speaking of this, do you want to show us your mom's statue? Do you mind doing the big reveal for us, yanking down that sheet and let's do it? Yes, I do. All right, let's get after it. Ready? All right, three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> Look at that! It's me! What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, wait, the exact Orange same looks good on you. <laughs> Amazing. I really can't, I mean, I can't believe she's real. <laughs> like almost the exact same clothes. Almost the exact same clothes. That's right, because scientists wear all kinds of things. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Zuri, what do you think? This is your first time seeing your mom, right? Uh... In the statue form. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Buggy? <laughs> yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It looks really cool. Tony, how about for you? To see your daughter memorialized like this. I mean, pe people who you don't know, people from all over the country and all over the world come to the Smithsonian, and they'll be looking at your kid here. What an opportunity for all of us. For, I'm just grateful to the ancestors for bringing us here, and especially the scientific ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> the engineers and the uh, all the different scientists who created so many amazing, amazing structures underground and above ground that we are able to enjoy today. And so much of this, too, is about inspiring, as we say, the next generation, but inspiring people who, who will come to the Smithsonian, who will see, hey, women can do this, right? I mean, this is a movement in this country that people are moving towards. And women who are living today, and many of us are young women, right. and women who are going to be around doing science for decades and decades, and that's also really important. Got to tell you, you're looking good right there, Ray. <laughs> thank I mean, that's you. That's really something to see. And I, can I say, all of you, thank you for being here. You're all looking good. So give us a big <laughs> cheer if you don't mind. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Can I say? this museum, Savannah and Hoda. This is so cool. So oh. it's a thrill to be with these incredible women. That was wow. really, cool. really inspiring. And this multi-generational awesomeness oh, right next God. to you. Really we, cool, Hallie. We can't handle it. Thank you, Hallie. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with more of our International Women's Day celebration. Okay, Jenna, you've been so excited about this. A remarkable story. A Navy commander paving the way for other women. You all just wait. For more than 220 years, the USS Constitution's crew was led by men. But now, for the first time in naval history, a woman is at the helm. Commander Billy J. Farrell is stepping into history. A storied piece of American history, the USS Constitution is the Navy's oldest commissioned ship still at sea. First launched in 1797, this iconic warship is now navigating uncharted waters. Constitution story is still being written. 
by making history with the first ever woman commander. I had to pinch myself a few times to say, is this really happening? And how lucky I am to be the 77th commander of USS Constitution. Commander Billy Farrell was just a young girl when she saw a Naval Academy graduation on TV and knew this is what she had to do. As that sixth grade girl, did you think, okay, yeah, this is something I can do. You know, I'm a, a woman. I can go into the Navy. Even watching that ceremony, I saw that there were women in the class. It wasn't a matter of if I could do it. It was just a matter of when. Serving 18 years in the Navy, Commander Farrell has worked her way up to this 224-year-old deck. Yeah. You were here, were you? Yeah, she was yeah. Yeah. Where she's paving a way for others, including women, serving under her command. It's very empowering as a woman to see that representation in a leadership position. Docked in Boston's Charlestown Navy Yard, the ship welcomes more than 350,000 visitors a year. I bet there's tourists, little girls who walk onto the ship and see you as the commander. I've definitely had some little girls come up and ask to give me a hug. It's very humbling. The Constitution is known as Old Ironsides because of the way cannonballs seem to bounce off her during the War of 1812. I'm just in awe of the story that she has and you know, the stories of our country and they how it all ties together. Keeping that history alive, one of her cannons is still fired twice a day. Does it feel like a dream come true? Every day. Every day when I come here and step on this ship and just feel the history that is here, it really is an awe-inspiring experience to be here. Okay, and now let's welcome Commander Billy Farrell to the stage. Da, da, da. <laughs> the TV, did you think, like, I am going to break that glass ceiling? Oh, there's no way. There's no way I would have ever imagined that, you know, after 224 years, I would be the person that was afforded the opportunity to be the first woman commander of USS Constitution. I want to know what it feels like when you put on this uniform. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. It's awesome. It's awesome, yeah. So I go to work normally in a 2022 20, uniform, yeah. and then I get to put this on, though, and it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to get to to show the heritage of the Navy and where we started. It. Well, you talked about what it felt like when you, little girls came up to you and wanted to hug you, but give us a little bit more on what that felt like in your position. It's just unbelievable to, to you know, especially in the Navy, usually we're very in the background, and so yeah. to, to be recognized and to have those little girls come up and say, thank you for what you do, it's just so special. Well, a vessel with such history, and yeah. now yes. you are a part of that <laughs> history. Commander, thank you so much. Thank Can you we so just much. say on behalf of all of our daughters, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. How do you spend your free time? I'm either in the gym or I just hang out with my friends or watch TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, of course. TikTok. Eighth grader Jenica Lewis of Grimes, Iowa seems like a typical teenager. That is, until you ask her about college. Do you remember your first offer, your first college offer? Yeah, Iowa State. Iowa State. And what was the 18th offer? Minnesota. Minnesota. You must be pretty good. All right. <laughs> At least those 18 offers haven't gone to her head. As one of the nation's most sought after ballers at just 14 years old. Here's the thing, you've got 18 offers now? You could have easily 50 plus offers. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. When she's not trying on college jerseys for size, Jenica's usually playing against girls a few years older than her, even occasionally showing up the boys on the court as well. She credits one boy in particular in helping her become a sharpshooter, her older brother, Trey. Do you remember when you realized, you know what? I'm actually pretty good at this. Yeah, that's when I used to do the same thing my brother did. Their dad, LC, coached Trey and now coaches Jenica. She was always in the gym with us since she was in diapers, but she's just got the mentality. She's a competitor. Anything he can do, I can do. 
That was her attitude. What do you make of what your daughter's done so far? It's surreal. It, I mean, really, it is. We knew she would be good. She always showed promise, you know, early, but not this early. Dad, how do you want this to play out? I mean, you've got 18 offers so far. She'll probably get a couple dozen more by the time she graduates from high school. You know, honestly, I want her just to play basketball. She's never been in this for the offers. She's never been in this for the attention. You know, she really, truly loves the sport of basketball. Jenica, what's the biggest lesson that your, your dad's taught you so far? Quantity over, right? Quantity, yeah. quality over quantity. That. Quality over quantity, I like that, coach. Quantity of colleges aside, Jenica's already got an eye on the WNBA, where we found at least one player Who's got their eye on Jenica? Hey, Jenica, Jordan Canada here from the LA Sparks. Just wanted to tell you that I've seen your highlights and I watched your videos and read up on your story and you have mad talent and so much skill. There's no doubt in my mind that you'll make it to the pros and who knows, you might even become an LA Spark one day. So keep working hard, looking forward to seeing you soon and good luck. That's so cool. WNBA, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. I could see it, I'm gonna save this tape. Dad, uh, how yes. proud are you of, of, of this little girl so far? You know, words can't really describe it. And honestly, it's not all about the basketball that I'm proud about. Her off the court stuff, it, it makes me even more proud. She's probably gonna get tired of me telling this story, but after, after one of her, her middle school games, the opposing team had a couple of girls on the team that um, wanted to take a picture with her. And, I just kind of razzed her a little bit and just told her, I said, hey, if we're late to her AAU practice, you're gonna have to run. And she looked me dead in the face and said, I'll run. She's like, sure, they'll have this forever. You know, running's temporary. Already handling a little fame and the expectations that come with it, like a pro. Do you feel any pressure? Not really, no, because I'm basically just doing what I love and there's not really any pressure that comes to it. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Okay, if you've ever dreamt of starting your own business, this may be the story that will inspire you to get started. Donna is introducing us to a young woman who followed her passion for fashion, right Donna? Yeah, she sure did, but you know what, it took a moment because uh -huh. like most young adults, Jane Liu was afraid of disappointing mm -hmm. her parents, mm -hmm. but you know what she did ladies? Hmm. She followed her gut and created a booming business. Take a look. Welcome to Shopo, a fashion brand that prides itself on being playful and professional, just like the company culture. Shopo is an online fashion brand that we set out to be your go-to place to shop. We're all about inclusivity, body positivity, and just 
a lot of great fashion. The business is the brainchild of 35-year-old Jane Liu. Jane, along with her parents Queenie and Frank, immigrated from China to Australia when Jane was just eight years old. We were poor, they worked in factories, they worked as cleaners, leaving behind their corporate jobs so that they can give me this brighter future. After college, Jane worked at some well-known accounting firms. And while it made her parents proud, Jane absolutely hated it. I remember back then looking at my job and just thinking, I can't do another 40 years of this. So in 2010, she took a risk and joined a friend selling clothing at different pop-up stores. She liked it so much that she quit her corporate job, but kept it hidden from her parents, even though she lived with them. For six months, um, getting up early in the morning, putting on my suit every day, packing an empty laptop bag so I didn't have to actually carry a laptop. And I had to get the bus into the city with my mom because she also worked in the city. That was the start of the business. Yet that business was over almost as quickly as it began. I was devastated, I was embarrassed, and now I was broke. One month later, Jane maxed out her credit cards to create a second business called Show Pony, which would eventually become Showpo. We even had three bricks and mortar stores. And I remember the moment that we decided we're gonna close all the stores and focus on online. That decision paid off, and so did her decision to advertise the brand on social media in 2011 at a time when few other retailers were doing the same. I couldn't afford traditional marketing methods. I'm just this, you know, girl just posting away on my social media, posting on Facebook before the days of Instagram, before the days of influencers. Um, and that's what helped grow the business. Was there a goal that you sort of set out to achieve that you thought to yourself, okay, once I get to this, then I've made it. I wanted to make um, more than my salary, which is I think $60,000 at the time. And then I would be able to just comfortably say to my parents, like, at least I'm doing what I love now. Shopo is on track to make $70 million in sales this year, and they ship their designs to over 100 different countries. Plus, her mom, Queenie, is a fan of the brand. My friend always, oh, Queenie, oh, you, you wear so beautiful. From your daughter? From your daughter? Yes, from my daughter's family. What is your biggest takeaway from everything you've experienced in what it means to become a successful entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur, you, you just gotta take some risks, you're gonna fail, but if you make a mistake now, you're actually saving yourself from a much bigger mistake later. And honestly, as human beings, we're all stubborn. Someone can't tell you something, you need to have made those mistakes. So it's just part of the journey. Fascinating story, right? And the oh. biggest part of it all is mm. that Jane actually paid off her parents' mortgage, bought her parents a car, and she, she said that that was the biggest thing she wanted to achieve oh. out of all of this. And it brings us full circle from earlier in the show, Hoda, you were talking about Don McLean, and it just, I think for a lot of these successful people, the biggest part is that family yes. moment, that family time. I mean, and Don McLean, by the way, another thing he said was when he was younger, he risked everything to become a singer. He said, I didn't have health insurance, I just rolled with it because he said, I knew I was yeah. good. And when I, when I was watching it, yes, I thought, yeah. oh my God, she knew she was good. She risked it all. Yes. She maxed out her credit cards. And one other thing that I think is important, nobody talks about, she said that one um, piece of advice she wants to give to people who want to be entrepreneurs is stop overthinking. It's easy, it's logical, it's rational to convince yourself out of something. Yes. But just stop and be a little stubborn and have that drive. She's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And I know I her like parents it. are so proud. And she had that philosophy of once she makes a certain amount, yes. she'll leave her job. Yep. So uh, that reminds me of that. Uh, Bethany gave some advice. She said, if you're in a job you don't like, put 10% of your time, 10% of your money into your passion. Yeah. And up it each every six yeah. months so pretty soon you'll have enough to try out you gotta have a plan but yeah. it's nice to feel a little uh -huh. drive for it too yeah. and since it's women's history month you guys we are going to keep bringing you stories of inspiring mm. ladies we like Jane Lou all month long I have thank an idea. you let's do it beyond all month long yeah, yeah. I, like I, like it. It. I like it we've been doing it all <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's That's true. True. <laughs> and we'll be back after this to cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, is this... 
we're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. 50 years ago, Title IX was passed prohibiting gender discrimination in any federally funded education or athletic activity. Mm -hmm. That same year, 1972, a brave 11-year-old girl from Hoboken, New Jersey, was busy waging her own battle, one that would forever change the playing field of Little League Baseball. When somebody would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always answer that I wanted to be a Yankee. As a girl growing up in Hoboken, New Jersey, Maria Pepe first started playing baseball to make new friends. We all had nicknames. It was Tippy and Louie and Juicy and Benji and Gigar and I was Pepe. No one, I don't think, even knew my first name. <laughs> but soon her name would be one they'd remember. In the summer of 1972, 11-year-old Maria Pepe showed up to this very field to try out for the Little League team. The coach saw her in the dugout. He came over and he said, uh, are you going to sign up? And I looked at him and I'm like, well, you know, you know I'm a girl. He's like, wow, can you play? And I'm like, yeah, I can play. Not only could she play, she was a star, making the team a starting pitcher. But Little League Baseball had banned girls from playing in 1951, and word got around Maria was on the team. After her third game, her coach showed up to her apartment. Yeah, I mean, I think it was hard when Jimmy came to our home. And he wanted the uniform back. That was very hard. I got to keep my cap. Heartbroken, Maria's family, along with the National Organization for Women, took Little League Baseball to court for gender discrimination. More than two years later, they won in a landmark decision, which would open Little League to all girls. But by then, at 14 years old, Maria was too old to play. So yes, there is a, a heartbreak at a young age, but I do get to to play forever through all the girls that came after me. And so that's a blessing. That next season, 50 girls tried out for the Hoboken team. And since that time, it's estimated more than 5 million girls have played Little League Baseball. These girls, I tell you today, I'm so proud of them. That makes me happy. I could die tomorrow and know that I helped to open doors that cap she got to keep now hangs in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And as for that pitching arm, uh, I can still throw a ball. <laughs> and here they are. We have Maria Pepe here along with 12 members of the New York Wonders. Let's give them a round of It feels amazing. I'm quite honored today. Uh, it's hard to not be emotional because I was so young um, when I was discriminated against because of my gender. And so I encourage the girls to believe in themselves and to never 
accept anyone saying you can't do something just because you're a girl. Um, I'm quite honored. I get to play forever through all the girls <laughs> that came after me. That's the best gift that anybody could ask for. That's your legacy. Maria, it must have been hard to take on that fight yeah. as a little girl in 1972. It was hard yeah. only because it really wasn't about just baseball. It was about what girls should and shouldn't do in life. And so there was a, a barrier that it seemed like, you know, it was very difficult to break through. I always believed I had the Lord on my side, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, so I, I feel very blessed. Is that today. why you never? Because some people in your situation might have quit. They might have said, "You know what? The wall's too high. You know, I, I can't I, climb it." I could say I, I had a shield around me. Like, uh, <laughs> I just knew I needed to continue and carry this. Um, I really love baseball, so I was not going to give up something that I love doing. Wow. We are so happy Maria. to give up a petite powerhouse. Thank you. Yes. Look at these great girls behind the you. Girl. 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 Wonder. Oh, yeah. right. You know, Candace, it's so hard to believe that you first met Bob Saget back when you were 10 years old. You're 45 now. It's been 35 years of knowing and loving Bob Saget. Do you remember the very first time you met him? I do remember. I, I do. We were doing our pilot episode for Full House, and Bob is so tall. You know, he's 6'4". And I was 10 years old. I'm still not that much taller <laughs> than when I was 10, but, but he kneeled down to me and got eye to eye with me. And he said, hi, I'm Bob and I'm gonna be your dad. I'm playing your dad. So I want you to feel comfortable and we're gonna be friends. And he was just so warm and inviting. And I remember that as a kid, he made me feel instantly comfortable with him and he was just so sweet and it really kicked off an incredible 35 year friendship. Well, for you as a young actress to be able to be yourself, you have to be able to share like what's on your mind, what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. Was he a place that you could go to do that? He was, it's mm -hmm. one, one of the things that made Bob so special. Bob was so vulnerable. He was so emotionally available all the time. And he was really the first person in my life as a man that I saw cry and have those emotions right at the forefront of his conversations. And he wasn't afraid of them. He wasn't embarrassed by them. And that's what made your connection with Bob so great. And that's what made mine so great with him because I felt so safe with him. And it was like, there wasn't anything that I couldn't say or share with him. And he would be right in that moment with you. If you were hurting, he would hurt with you. You would see the tears well up in his eyes. He would breathe with you. He just yeah, it was an incredibly available, emotional person. I mean, that's so, I, I, I understand why you didn't forget the moment when you watch a grown man tear up in front of you. Do you remember mm -hmm. anything specific or do you just remember those emotions? Well, there's a, a lot that I remember because we've been friends for so long and, you know, Bob, Bob has dealt with so much death in his life with his sisters and his uncles and and his parents. So Bob was never afraid to talk about it and show it. And, you know, he always dealt with that in a, in a comedic way, but there was always so much sadness and hurt behind it. And that's how he handled it. So there were many times, I mean, I literally growing up with Bob and not just on television, but we were friends. Like Bob is my whole, not only childhood, but my my teenage years, I mean, we used to 
go to Jerry's Deli all the time and we just drive around and listen to music. And sometimes we'd have those conversations like he would just like feel his sister's presence. And we would just sit and feel that, you know, Bob is a remarkable person. And um, I I just, I've never had a friendship like the one I've had with him. And that's why it makes it so hard. You said Bob is a remarkable person. You talk about him like he's here still. I can't, I, I can't believe he's gone forever. I just can't. I, my, my brain has not, um, comprehended that yet um you know I think for for even tv viewers again you might think like oh he he played your dad on tv but Bob was so much more than that I mean really one of my closest friends for 35 years so to to think that um he's not here and we're not going to have that last you know another joke or another hug or um, just another bit of ridiculousness in life is, is, um, uh, it's almost unbearable for me to think about. What did you lose when he passed? Um, Bob was available and there for everyone that he knew but Bob Bob was that person that no matter what happened Bob would drop anything for you in a second in a heartbeat and you didn't even have to be his best friend for him to do that Mm -hmm. I mean that's how huge his heart was but when you know being someone that was very close to him losing him is um He, I I don't, selfishly, I just think he's just, he he was just someone that you could count on and would love you no matter what, and just, and be there. And so that's, there are very few friends in life like that. And that is the hardest part of the loss is just that, that friendship that's unconditional that, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's Mm -hmm. a lifetime, but I guess our lifetime is you know, finished on earth <laughs> for now. For now. It's a good way to end that at least for now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. (laughs) From season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. It's funny because when I watched John Mayer break down and I watched John Stamos and I watched you and I watched all these people in his life, I don't think America realized just how many people he cut. The number of people who have come out, the tributes, the beautiful uh, fundraising events that are going on. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen this in my lifetime with someone in Hollywood that is so universally loved and cared for. And it, you know, it just, it just struck me 
he was all that, wasn't he? He really was all that. It is remarkable to me. I mean, I've always known how special he is, his close friends do, but Bob was friends with everyone and, and from, from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And so to see so many people coming together, I'm glad that the world is getting to hear how much more there was to Bob. Um, he was a great humanitarian. He tirelessly raised money for scleroderma uh, research foundation over the years Again, he would drop anything for anyone, and he just had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, he made you laugh. Like he was just, it was the best combination of, of all different traits that you could imagine together. And that was Bob. You know, you remember the first time you met him. And I wonder what was the last communication you had with him? Um, it was just a few, just two weeks before he passed. I'm actually gonna grab my, my phone. <laughs> I'm so scared that I'm gonna pull up his text and then accidentally delete it one day. Like it scares me so much because I don't ever wanna lose this. But um, Bob and I talked just a couple weeks before he passed and um, <laughs> we were going to have dinner and we got into a little tiff and his flight was delayed. We ended up not having dinner, but in, in Bob fashion, the next day he wrote me like what would be pages long of a text. And he was apologizing, saying he was cranky and he was just so, he was just so sorry. And um, he said, oh, now I feel even worse. I was so wrong. You're like my favorite person on the earth. And I acted like Dolly. I was getting ready to take a late flight and I was annoyed. Dolly was his mom. <laughs> and he said, you're one of the few that understands that if I act like Dolly, I'm not the best at my game that day. Ha ha. And Bob went on and on and on in the text. And he said at the end, I love you more. I love you more. Um, for, I love you more for the trouble you're giving me, if that's even possible. And I wrote back, I love you. I could never be mad at you. Roll my eyes at you, yes, but never mad. And I love that you being Dolly, that made me laugh out loud. I loved your mom. And he just wrote back, I loved you. My mom loved you too. When you start things in life and have <laughs> are very important pieces. And that's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful last exchange. I love your sweatshirt. Everyone's talking about your sweatshirt. It says, what, love like Jesus, hug like Bob, Bob's is that right? Bob Sackett. Okay, brilliant. A, B, like uh, it's raising money, isn't it? It is actually. I just designed the sweatshirt selfishly for for me. I for Kelly. For I, I made ten of them, and um, you know I don't think there's a a person that can showcase love for the world more than Jesus. But Bob gave the best hugs ever. So those are like the two that have been put on the pedestal for me. Love like Jesus and hug like Bob Saget. And it, it, a bunch of people said, oh, can I get one? Can I get one? So I teamed up with the shop forward and all the proceeds, 100% of them have gone to the Scleroderma Research Foundation. And we've raised over $200,000 so far. Wow. Yeah. One sweatshirt that you that you got for you and Kelly and the rest. That's amazing. I know. He, you know, I think it was such a shock to everybody when he passed. Did he, and since you were in more communication with him than most, did he seem like healthy, okay? Like I think everyone yes. was Yes. I mean, as I said, we he was he was on the road doing a stand-up. He was just loving it, was healthy, was fine. And yeah, Bob just also was not 
didn't complain in that way. He just was going and he was on a roll. That's why it was so shocking mm -hmm. because he had done the show that night. I mean, what a way to go in that sense. He, he, he left us, but he had just finished what he loved doing two hours of stand up, which is almost unheard of. He had like an extra long night because he, it was just going so well. Mm -hmm. And that was it. You know, I, that's why it was so, it was so shocking to all of us. Cause there were no there were any signs of that anything would be wrong. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Ali Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Who meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Was he proud of your career? <laughs> Bob was so proud of my career. He really was. He was a big cheerleader for me. I mean, I know now as a parent, when you watch someone grow up from a child to an adult and see what they've done, he was so incredibly supportive. And that's what was so awesome about Bob because we had this close friendship. And, you know, if people see Bob stand up, they, you know, he has a different side to him in his standup. It's not family friendly standup. And so that would always be a question like, how, how can you guys be friends? And it's like, well, I grew up with Bob. So I understand his sense of humor. I too have a sense of humor, <laughs> but I can also separate that person that's, you know, on the stage making jokes to get the laugh and the real heart behind a person and their love and their friendship and their kindness. And, and so Bob was so wonderful in that way and supportive of me and, and yet would tell me like, he would invite me to things all the time in the standup world, but then say, you're invited, but don't come. <laughs> don't come because I know you, this will like cross a line for you. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to laugh. So like, I love you. You can come if you want to, but don't come. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that's like a, what a real friend does. Just lastly, Candace, I know who's proud of your career. We all follow your career. I know you always have another project in the hopper. So are you working on something right now? What do you have that's coming out? I have another Aurora Tea Garden mystery that is airing on February 20th. This is our 18th movie in the franchise. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. That's on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. And the special thing about this one is called Haunted by Murder. These are all family friendly, by the way. You can watch them with your kids, but this is about a haunted house and my daughter is actually in this movie and Lexa Doig who plays my best friend in the series 
her daughter is also in this movie and the two of them are playing us, our characters as teenagers. Okay. So we have some flashbacks and it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's oh, really fun. That, that is awesome. Candace, thank you so much. What a beautiful and tender tribute uh, to Bob, boy. Thank you for sharing, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Hoda. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. In the wake of the sudden passing of beloved comedian Bob Saget, friends and fans and colleagues have been sharing countless stories of his remarkable kindness and generosity. But for the first time now, we're about to hear from the person who knew him best recently and really just maybe loved him the most, I although there's so. a good competition for that. I'd say so. Kelly Rizzo, what a wonderful, wonderful human being. I got a chance to share an emotional conversation with Kelly. While she says this is the most difficult time in her life, she also says it's also easy to know what her mission will be moving forward. She says it's spreading Bob's legacy of love and laughter. Kelly, first of all, I just want to say the entire country feels like we're holding your hands, your collective hands. I want to know just how you're doing today. Well, I was just telling some of my family that today's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a sense of calm. I think you get to a point where your body will just physically not let you cry anymore, or mm -hmm. at least all day. Still, every second is is horrible, but you start to come to terms with it a little bit. Six years ago, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo, a food and travel blogger from Chicago, met after connecting on Instagram. Married since 2018, friends say they had a love for the ages. I'm watching you and you're sitting in your home that you shared with with Bob. And I just wondered if you're remembering all the, the little things, if that pops up. Well, it's impossible here not to, but the support has been, that, that has been the one silver lining from this is the incredible outpouring of love and support, not only from just everybody that loved Bob, but also for me and just from his friends and family, it's been, I don't know how else I'd be getting through this right now. The number of people, Kel, who loved Bob is just, I, I can't even quantify. I heard someone say that Bob was an I love you guy. He put it all out there. He told everyone that he loved. And I mean, quite frankly, anyone he met and even spent any time with at all, he told them he loved them endlessly and tirelessly. And that was his entire message. If you knew Bob, and he loved you, you knew it. There was never, ever a doubt in your mind. I mean, even at his, at, at his memorial, there were a lot of people there and every single person was pretty much like, oh, I talked to Bob last week. I'm like, mm -hmm. how did he have the time mm -hmm. to talk to everybody and tell everybody that he loved them all the time? It was just amazing. We had an interview with, with Mike Young, who's, you know, a comedian and dear friend of Bob's. He said something, Kel, that struck, um, struck me. He said, most comedians, after a stand-up gig, they catch the last flight home. 
He said, not Bob. Bob wanted to catch the first flight home. He wanted to be with you, Kelly. And he said that, that their love was, was perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was what was always so special is every time he would be out of town, he would always try to, he would, you know, he would work so hard and he, um, you know, he'd love to sleep in, but when he was away, he would always try to, he would still wake up at, you know, go to bed at two and then wake up at four so he could be on the 6 a.m. flight so he could come home just so we could spend time together. So, you know, we valued every single second that we had together. So that's why it's, you know, this is so heartbreaking. But at the same time, I know that we, you know, every second that we had together was just maximized to the fullest and we absolutely just there was nothing you know left unsaid and nothing left on the table mm. so those are the things that i'm just trying to hold on to you know you know i feel like everyone felt like they knew bob because everyone mm -hmm. grew up watching him or or even young kids now were watching him again on tv but uh kel who was the bob saget like at dinner when there was no audience it was still the same and he just tried to make everybody feel special and happy and comfortable and it's funny like our, our dry cleaners he has i always joke that he had a deeper relationship with them than he had with anybody you know like they love him and he loved them and his constant message was just treat everybody with kindness because you know he'd gone through so much in his life and he knew how hard life could be and so he always was just so kind and loving to everybody and he was just I'm sorry he was just such a he was just the best man i've ever known in my life and he was just so kind and so wonderful and everybody that was in his life knew it <laughs> and even anybody that would just casually meet him was like wow this was a special guy and he was yours and by all accounts he was living his best life. Did you think he was feeling okay during during all this time? All I'll say is that he was very happy and he was just thrilled to be back out on the road. And he was also very sensitive and just all the weight of everything going on in the world right now, he, it was just weighing very heavily on him. And that's mm. why he felt more compelled than ever to make people laugh and bring people together. And he did it up until the very last moments. You know, we've all lost someone in our life and sometimes you hang on to the last text, the last conversation, the last connection. Is that, is that Kel the case with you? I'm just very grateful that it was all, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. It was, I think I said, I love you dearly. And he said, I love you endlessly. And then he mm -hmm. said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And then, you know, it was just all very, it was just all love. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. that is that's beautiful, Kel. Um, when we were seeing the images of everyone saying goodbye at the funeral, is there anything that you feel comfortable sharing about what it was like? Were you able to speak? I don't think I'll get too much into it, but I did speak, and it was just the whole thing, as painful as it was, was beautiful to be surrounded by so many people who loved him and who loved each other. And I can't even verbalize the level of support. I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that he was very passionate about was uh, scleroderma that took his sister Gay's life. And one of the most beautiful things of this was n nobody said, hey, everybody go donate to scleroderma in Bob's honor. But do you know what everyone did? They donated. They, they the did it. Bob was dedicated to finding a cure for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that took his sister's life. The Scleroderma Research Foundation estimates that Bob raised more than $26 million for the SRF in his lifetime. He had three life's works. One was his children, next was comedy, and then the SRF. He spent over 30 years tirelessly working so hard to try to find a cure for scleroderma. So that's why anything that I can do to help keep that legacy going and just help with the SRF because it meant so much to him. As I'm sitting here reflecting and sitting with you is that Bob spent his life and he sort of united people just by being himself. He wasn't trying. And in his passing, he's doing it again. 
I've never seen anything like this. It's it's unbelievable. The just the outpouring, mm-hmm. but the consensus overall of what an amazing person he was, whether people knew him or didn't know him, because one way or another, he was in your living room since the eighties yeah. or, you know, you went to shows. I mean, whatever it is, it was, um, he felt like he was everyone's, you know, dear friend. Nobody will ever be like Bob. And I think he just kind of lived his life unafraid, which is what struck me. He found love again in his 60s. He told his friends, I love you. He was back on stage. Like the guy was fearless. And I think that's what struck me about it. And she loved all parts of him. But, and even, you know, on stage, he had that, like, that raunchy side. She yeah. was like, but that was part of him. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't afraid. No, he's truthful. Yeah, he you really know? told the truth. It's just like, it just is so moving. I hope it's comforting to her that everyone, so many people just mm-hmm. feel so connected to him and are just missing him and loving him. And what a wonderful legacy to leave. Well, one of the things that's become obvious over the last couple of weeks is Bob Saget was a special guy. Mm-hmm. Kelly? Yeah. Also pretty special. Uh, amazingly special. Yeah. And Bob made friendships late in life. You saw John Mayer just mm-hmm. sobbing after Bob passed. And you just thought, like, wow. He kept, he, his circle yeah. kept getting bigger and bigger. Welcome to a terrific Tuesday edition of Popstar Plus. On the show today, we're getting ready for WrestleMania this weekend with WWE superstar Bianca Belair. Then we're going to switch gears from the ring to somewhere over the rainbow. Our third hour friends had a very inspiring conversation for Women's History Month with Judy Garland's granddaughter. So we'll have that for you. And later, we're celebrating the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Walken. But first, here are today's Popstar headlines. First up, our friends, this is great. Quest Love starts off Pop Start for all gr- a great reason. Can't forget that following that infamous slapping incident at the Oscars on Sunday, Amir Thompson, a.k.a. Quest Love, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, Summer of Soul, earning him his first Oscar and nomination. Quest celebrated by DJing at Beyonce and Jay-Z's Oscar party, then hopping on a plane late night back to NYC to make it back in time for Monday's Tonight Show wow. taping. Of course, wow. Quest Love there greeted by the staff, <laughs> filling the studio. 6B uh, to celebrate his milestone achievement and today we are sending him a huge congrats from all of us here in Studio 1A. Yeah. Very yes. cool. Uh-huh. Next up, Uncle Lau, the proud family, louder and prouder. Last month, the hit animated series returned, continuing the next chapter of Penny Proud's hijinks and adventures. But what would a proud family reboot be without the master <laughs> of mischief himself, Mr. Al Roker? <laughs> We've got an exclusive sneak peek at Uncle Al's big return in this week's brand new episode. Uh-uh, here is a tip, Roker. Colored glasses don't make you look younger. <laughs> oh, very funny. I expect better from you, Penny. Especially after I helped you out. Helped me out? When? Oh, come on. You remember? That PB and CC thing. Man, I wish you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. Consider it done. Hey, Penny. Anyway, I got a big promotion out of that. I'm working directly with the big guy downstairs. Don't you mean upstairs? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it almost looks like what you're wearing oh right my now. God, yeah. It's awesome. It, it is what he's wearing right now. Well, there you go. Yeah, you they, planned that up perfectly. They, they, they do such a terrific job. I, there are kids or young adults who come up to me now and say, they didn't know I did the tea, the, did the weather. Oh, yeah. they, they, they just knew me from the proud family. <laughs> right. That's so cool. cool. Yeah. Very cool. nice. Well, congrats. That looks fun. The next episode of The Proud Family, Loud and Prouder, starts streaming on Disney Plus tomorrow. So be sure and check that out. Next up, Taylor Swift. Cue this year's graduation theme, Swift Song 22. The Grammy-winning chart-topping superstar about to add yet another title to her name, Doctor of Fine Arts. On Monday, New York University announced that Swift's going to receive the honorary degree at this year's graduation, where she's also been named as one of the ceremony's speakers after the pandemic postponed NYU's comm- commencement for all the classes. Well, 2020 and 2021, this year's ceremony will act as sort of a super graduation. Wow. They'll honor all three of those graduating classes, and the soon-to-be Doctor Swift 
That's funny. We'll deliver her addre- address at Yankee Stadium on May 18th. Wow. You know, there's, Congrats there's to There's a the... course at NYU on Taylor Swift. Oh, that, has sure. a wait, okay. yeah, that has a waiting list a mile long. People can't get what into it. What do they it. do in that? I don't know, but it's wow. really it's popular. popular. They write songs about yeah. ex-boyfriends. Cool. And if you get a big break, you just shake it off. All right, and now a little bit uh, a little bit more for you, hence the plus in Popstar Plus. A couple more headlines. First up, John Travolta, the beloved actor, turned out to be probably the biggest winner at the Academy Awards, and he wasn't even nominated. John and his son, Ben, left the show on Sunday night as the proud owners of a brand new puppy. Apparently, Little Mac and Cheese made an appearance at the show during Betty White's In Memoriam tribute, and Travolta connected with Jamie Lee Curtis backstage and walked away with a brand new addition to the family, Curtis calling the good news a perfect tribute to the late, great Betty White. That is one lucky dog. All right, next up, Keith Urban, the country music superstar, is channeling his inner pop diva on Monday. Urban sharing this amazing Adele cover. But I can't bring myself to swim when I am drowning in this silence. Baby, let me go. There you go. In a post on Instagram, Keith called Adele's easy on me lyrics, quote, divinely timed. Not bad there. Finally, Tom Hanks, the Hollywood icon, is out in Pittsburgh. He's shooting his next movie. And while spending some time on the East Coast, you may have noticed that Tom Hanks has been pulling some double duty. That's right. He's working the wedding circuit. Last week, the award-winning actor crashed one bride's pre-ceremony photo shoot, leaving her with probably the best candid photos for her wedding album she could ever imagine. And now he's taking things one step further. Tom Hanks recently answering the call to officiate a stranger's wedding. The bride, Krishna Pasnick of Bellevue, Pennsylvania, knew Hanks was an ordained minister, reached out to him just to see if he would do the honors for her big day. And lo and behold, the big screen star came through. Wedding photographer Grace Ruiz told NBC News Hanks was so personable, funny, and kind during the entire wedding, calling it an unforgettable experience. It looks like if you're getting married and you find yourself in the Pittsburgh area, America's sweetheart Tom Hanks is available for all of your wedding needs. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Coming up next, WWE superstar Bianca Belair sizes up the competition at this weekend's big WrestleMania. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. (laughs) In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. WWE superstar Bianca Belair bested Sasha Banks at last year's WrestleMania, the first black woman to face each other in the night's main event. Well, Belair is going to be back in the ring this weekend for WrestleMania 38, and she spoke to us about how she's feeling ahead of her big match. WrestleMania 37, I was able to be a part of a very unprecedented moment. Sasha Banks and I, we became the first two black females to ever main event WrestleMania. You could see the emotion in both women's faces. To be a part of that moment uh, is everything to me. And to be a part of a moment where it was more than just being about me or being about Sasha Banks, it was more than just being about us. It was about inspiring the world, inspiring women, men, boys, girls. It doesn't matter, it transcends across 
across all race, religion, genders, it doesn't matter. It was able to touch everyone. And it's a moment that's going to go down and live in history forever. You know, the response to Sasha Banks and I made him at WrestleMania, it was all positive. Even going into it, we had fans creating hashtags uh, for us to main event WrestleMania. So the fans wanted it. So to be able to give the fans what they wanted and be able to deliver and have people still talking about that match, knowing that that, that match was so much bigger than the both of us and it in affected people and impacted people in such a positive way. That's what this is all about. We also won an SB off of that match. So to be able to be recognized in the world of sports um, off of a match where I may even with Sasha Banks is everything. You know, coming off of WrestleMania uh, last year, main eventing with Sasha Banks, having our fans back for the first time since the pandemic had happened and walking out of SmackDown as champion, um, you know, I, I'm riding off of that going into WrestleMania 38. I'll be competing against Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship on April 2nd in Dallas, Texas. And, um, you know, I made history last year, so I'm just looking to go back to back at WrestleMania and uh, walk out as champion, but this time walk out as Raw Women's Champion this year. Becky Lynch came into SummerSlam and beat me in 26 seconds, and she took the title from me, and she's had that title ever since. Uh, she's Raw Women's Champion now, and we've been going back and forth. Um, you know, for me, this, this is my redemption story going into WrestleMania 38. I have yet to actually perform uh, in front of a full full WrestleMania crowd. So this will be the first year that I'm able to do that uh, in a title match with Becky Lynch. So uh, our fans are everything. And it's going to be really exciting to be uh, at WrestleMania in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. See, WrestleMania, um, it's amazing now because it's now for two nights. It'll be April 2nd and April 3rd. I'll be on April 2nd with Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. They'll be on as well going for the SmackDown Men's Championship. So the the night is going to be full of some crazy, amazing um, matches. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with, with Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Things are really heating up with them. Um, they have they've had history. Ever, you know, they were they were a part of the very first main uh, main event of WrestleMania that, that the women were a part of. So they have a lot of history there. Ronda Rousey with 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 her um, extensive background and, and Charlotte Flair with her being being the champion multiple times. She's the most decorated um, woman in WWE history. Uh, it's 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 going to be interesting. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. I think that it's going to be a brutal match. And said she's going to get hers here tonight at SummerSlam. Bianca Belair showed up. So I call myself the EST of WWE. That means that I am the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best. Anything that good that ends in EST, that's what I am. And I'm all about just striving to be the absolute best BEST version of myself my very first time with an entrance I honestly just didn't know what to do with my hands so this is where the, I do like a little bounce when I come out. Bianca Belair took out uh, Zelina Vega and Carmella last night teaching them a lesson after the assault from two weeks ago led by of course her opponent Sasha Banks during the contract signing. And then my braid is just right there. And I just like to twirl and skip and bounce to the ring. So that's really how it all came about. It's just a huge part of who I am. It's a part of, um, of who Bianca Belair is. And it's right there. And I like to just have fun and bounce and skip to the ring. And, and I like to whip my hair up in the air. So it's, it's kind of just a part of who I am. And it just happened naturally. My braid is my superpower. And it, it definitely can be used as, as a weapon. But the key word is only when it's necessary. My number one rule is do not touch my hair. But if you do, I will use it. Becky Lynch going after the hair yet again. But a continued strategy from Becky Lynch all throughout this match. Wow, man, to oh, 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 my goodness. Times. The grief. The braid um, initially was just as a way for me to stand out. And one day I was in a match and you know, the, the girls, the first thing they always try to do is go to my hair and pull my hair. And it's like, how can I get them to stop touching my hair? And so one day in a match, I threw it at a girl. It made this huge loud noise. The crowd went crazy. 
And I was able to capitalize off of that in the ring. And in that moment, I realized, whoa, this is this is definitely can definitely be used to my advantage and not my disadvantage. And big thanks to Bianca. And of course, more importantly, good luck this weekend. We should mention that you can catch WrestleMania from the WWE on Peacock. And just ahead, the legacy of Hollywood legend Judy Garland, but this time through the eyes of her granddaughter. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And we're back here on Popstar Plus for Women's History Month. We're telling incredible stories of remarkable women through conversations with their granddaughters. Today's focus, the talented Judy Garland, who starred, of course, as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and her granddaughter told our Dylan Dreyer about the influence Miss Garland had on her life. We're back with our series, Generations Today, celebrating Women's History Month by sharing the stories of some legendary women as told by their grandchildren. It's such a fun way to learn more about these women. And this morning, we are taking a look back at a Hollywood icon. Judy Garland would have turned 100 this year. Her granddaughter, v Vanessa O'Neill, never had the chance to meet the legendary actress, but her grandmother's legacy lives on through her family. I'm in awe, even being her own granddaughter. I'm so impressed and blown away that this four foot 11 little woman has this humongous voice. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Being Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz is her most legendary role, but for Judy Garland, being a grandmother may have been the role she most desired. Her excitement was seen on the Today Show back in 1967 as she sat with her two children, Lorna and Joe. Looking forward to being a grandmother? That's going to happen one of these can't days. Can't wait. Really? I can't wait. I'll let, I want her to have a baby immediately, and then she can see the baby for only 25 minutes, and I'll be a babysitter. Makes me tear up a little just hearing that, because obviously we didn't get to see her. In Vanessa O'Neill's home, Judy is known as Triple G, as she would now be a great grandma to Vanessa's two young sons. You're a great singer. To the world, Judy is an icon of Hollywood's golden era, starring in more than 31 films like A Star is Born, Easter Parade with Fred Astaire. Right, left, right, good. And Meet Me in St. Louis. She was also a Broadway legend and an acclaimed recording artist who was the first woman to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. It's really incredible how she paved the way for so many other women down the line. I always say that I have such strong women in my family who aren't afraid to speak up and be their most authentic self. And I know that that sometimes isn't probably easy, but I hope to pass that along to my kids. For Vanessa's family, Judy's ruby slippers are some big shoes to fill. 
When did it register with you that your grandmother was somebody truly special? I must have been about five or six, and my mom was performing in Vegas, and I saw, you know, like my grandma on top of the slot machines, like turning, <laughs> like a huge <laughs> bottle of her. Vanessa credits her mother, actress and singer Lorna Luck, with keeping her grandmother's memory alive. I watched my mom perform so much of my grandmother's music you know, live and sitting in the wings. Lorna. Lorna wrote about life with Judy in her memoir, Me and My Shadows, 1998, saying of Judy, everything I know about being a good mother to my children, I learned from her. What traits would you say have, have been passed down through the generations to you? I definitely think our sense of humor. <laughs> it's, it's a huge, huge part of our personality to make things fun and funny, but also to get through hard times. I like to laugh. I like to have a bag of popcorn, go on a roller coaster now and then. But behind the lights and stage, Judy was often troubled and struggled with addiction. Did your mom ever talk with you about the bad sides or the downsides that fortunately your grandmother went through? Not until I got a little bit like of age. I do have the addiction gene myself. I'm seven years sober. And I really do feel like it's a genetic trait in my family. Vanessa's grandmother suffered with her own condition in silence. Judy Garland died of a drug overdose in 1969 at the young age of 47. My grandma was living in a time where there really wasn't much help. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't AA and these programs and people didn't really know what, what addiction was. Vanessa bypassed show business altogether and today is a personal trainer and nutrition coach. The health and wellness industry has helped me so much, not only with my physical health and body image, but my mental health, 1,000 Her home is in Southern California with her husband, Patrick, their five-year-old son, Logan, and a brand new baby boy, Kieran, who was just born somewhere under the rainbow. A sign, Vanessa says, that Judy was there. You could see behind the little bassinet that my son was in, Sure enough, just a big rainbow right there. And it really makes you feel like, hey, like you are sending me a sign. Thank you. That's amazing. Don't you get chills Horrible. seeing the rainbow? I have the chills sure. right now. It doesn't well, rain much in San Diego. To get a sure. rainbow is, is hard to do. Yeah. Um, the, the baby she just had two weeks ago um, is the fourth great grandchild for Judy. Vanessa's brother, Jesse, also has two children. And, and by the way, um, you know, in that piece, you'll notice that Liza Minnelli is yep. her aunt. Yeah. And we actually just saw her on stage with Lady Gaga there um, at the Oscars. So the, the first time we've seen her in quite some time. So yes. this greatness oh. runs in the family. Pretty cool. Still to come, we got a great throwback visit with Hollywood icon Christopher Walken next on Popstar Plus. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back, everybody. Christopher Walken turns 79 years young this week. The Deer Hunter, Catch Me If You Can, Hairspray. He's had so many memorable and great roles, and we'd like to share his visit here to today, back in 1992.
had a career that now stretches over 30 years. Christopher Walken has earned a reputation as an actor who's good at being bad. An Oscar winner with over 100 stage and screen roles to his credit, he's cast as a villain once again this summer, a guy named Max Shrek, poised to oppose Batman in the season's biggest movie. Christopher Walken, good morning. Morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, Max Shrek, as opposed to Catwoman, as opposed to Penguin, is, is not a character with whom readers of Batman comics might be familiar. Who is the guy? Max Shrek is uh, the name of the actor who played the, um, the vampire in the original Dracula movie, Nos Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And um, he's named after him, though it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with him. He's, he's a uh, businessman. He, he's the uh, owner and uh, CEO of Shrek's department store, which is the Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Alexander's of Gotham City. He's the, one of the last men on earth to wear spats on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very lavish production, um, it, it, but essentially it is a cartoon. Did you approach it as serious drama, or did you try to add a cartoon quality to Max Shrek? Odd as it may seem, Max, we're both perceived as monsters. In a show like this, where there are wigs and costumes and big sets and special effects and so forth. Of course, it takes it out of a, uh, a kind of naturalistic uh, context. Frankly, I feel it's a bum rap. I'm a businessman. Tough, yes. Shrewd, okay. But that does not make me a monster. Don't embarrass yourself, Max. I know all about you. But the feeling of being in it is much, uh, much more of, of theater, really, for me. I've worked a lot in the theater. Get the picture. What is that supposed to hypnotize me? No, just give you a splitting headache. Warner Brothers is is hoping and and betting that this film not only does box office, huge box office for the year, but rivals. The, the greatest returns of all time. Um, what are your own expectations for? I, in my, I've, I've been doing it a long time, and I try to avoid uh, expectations. Um, just hope for the best. My feeling about uh, um, acting in movies is that what I hope for is that the m movie that I just did is going to get me another one. Mm. And, uh, Were you a fan of the first one? Yes, I did. I liked it a lot. I was noting when I got here that, uh, that I was looking forward to this interview because I, I've admired your work a long time and we were supposed to talk uh, uh, before another movie of yours and it, it never materialized. I, I was, um, your reputation is that you don't enjoy these kinds of things. Is it accurate? You mean interviews? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, I, I am more comfortable uh, doing uh, other people's dialogue. And um, there's something about knowing your lines and knowing what you're thinking and having a character to play. Yeah. I don't think that's unusual for actors. Um, um, an actor is someone who, uh, who enjoys um, uh, uh, embodying another person, I suppose. Do you find it strange that people may be as fascinated with Christopher Walken as they might be with any character you play? I know. I think the characters I play are probably more colorful than I am. I noted at the top that, that, that over the years you've, you've developed this, this aura of, of playing guys who are, if not evil, certainly slightly off-setter. Yeah. Um, is, is that something you've cultivated or has it just kind of happened that way? I think that movies are, are so expensive to make that it, it just makes sense from a producer's angle, a kind of marketplace way. But if you have demonstrated that you can do something uh, effectively, that you'll be asked to do it again. I think that's why that happens. And, and I'm lucky, really, to have uh, 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 any kind of ball rolling. If it's, if it's villains and twisted people, then fine, you know, so long as I'm working. It is nice to break it up sometimes and, and do, um, to do different kinds of things. I like to do romantic things and um, uh, maybe picture with a woman and jokes and happy ending and all that. A final note, um, it, it's also clear from your track record that you're a guy who quickly moves from one project to another, that you'll mm. do a movie, and if there's no movie to do, then you'll do a play. Yeah. Why do you work so much? Well, because uh, I really like uh, to work. And uh, for me, it's the best time that I have. Uh, working is, is uh, the best time I have. When I'm not working, I'm always worrying about what's next and trying to get another thing. I'm on the phone trying to 
do things. Uh, I, I don't have hobbies. Uh, I don't like to travel much as an actor. I get to travel uh, to fascinating places all over the world and actually get to live there. I lived in Venice uh, a year ago for three months. You don't get to do that on vacation. So when I have time off, I, I'm not inclined to get on a plane and go somewhere. I, I have a house in the country and I tend to stay there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, think about what to do next. Mm -hmm. As noted, I'm an admirer. Christopher Walken, thank you. Thanks. And a big happy early birthday to Mr. Christopher Walken. Thanks for being with us for another Pop Star Plus tomorrow. We've got the scoop on Starstruck on HBO Max. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. you tuned in again into our digital show today in 30 it's wednesday morning it's a busy one too <clears throat> around the world and right here in studio 1a we're going to get right to it we're going to begin with the crisis in ukraine and the mixed messages coming out of the latest peace talks between ukraine and russia richard engel will bring us the very latest and then we got to reunite the two players in a truly incredible story mm -hmm. a young woman whose heart stopped during a flight and the fellow passenger a doctor who raced into action and saved her mm -hmm. life Really important moment. They had a great message to share as well. You yeah, look forward to that. All that, then Raven Simone. She stopped by the third hour to chat about her new show. And on the fourth hour, Justin Sylvester, of course, he brings us the scoop. So what should we do? Should we go ahead and do it? Let's Is it do it. time? Let's, just, let's not wait anymore. All right. Time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We'll start with NBC's Richard Engel in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine accuses Russia this morning of playing a trick saying Russian promises after negotiations in Istanbul to drastically reduce military activity around Kyiv and the nearby city of Chernihiv is merely a ploy for time to rearm and consolidate forces. President Zelensky saying Ukraine isn't letting its guard down. The signals we hear from the negotiations can be called positive, he says, but they do not drown out the explosions of Russian shells, adding Ukraine isn't willing to surrender any territory to Russia. Promises also can't drown out what Russia is doing to the city of Mariupol. New satellite images show how Russian strikes have leveled entire blocks. The Pentagon also expressing deep skepticism about Russia's supposed trust-building withdrawals around Kyiv. We're not prepared to call this a retreat or even a withdrawal. Russia invaded Ukraine over a month ago from three directions. From the north, down from Belarus toward Kyiv, from the east toward Kharkiv, and from the south toward Mariupol. Russia's northern front around Kyiv has been a disaster. Huge Russian losses and logistical failures, including a 40-mile-long convoy that ran out of gas. The Pentagon believes Russia could now focus on the other fronts while rebuilding forces around Kyiv. This was a Russian position. You can see the Z that has become the mark of this war on the Russian armored vehicle. And it seems that they were destroyed just as they were camping out in this area. You can see all of their equipment, clothing, flak jackets and food just left here right at the back of this armored vehicle. Across Ukraine now, they're not bracing for a Russian ceasefire, not taking the Russians' word, 
but preparing for more Russian attacks. Richard Engel reporting us for us from Kharkiv this morning. All right, let's focus more on the talks in Turkey overnight. Both sides sitting down for a second day in a row. Today's senior international correspondent, Kier Simmons, he joins us now from Istanbul, Turkey. Kier, what's the latest? Well, Hoda, despite the continuing fighting that Richard was talking about there, there does appear to have been some political progress in the building behind me there. Ukraine proposing that it could be neutral without any Western bases on its territory, proposing a 15-year plan for Crimea and a new strategic framework for Ukraine that would involve Western countries guaranteeing its safety. Now, the Russians described that as constructive, but I think, you know, Hoda, notable uh, that the Russians did not themselves appear to make any political uh, uh, plans, any political uh, uh, proposals, they say they'll take Ukraine's idea back to President Putin. Well, Kier, by our count, this is the, I think, the seventh time that both sides have sat down for talks. There hasn't been much progress in any of those. So what is the likelihood that there's going to be a breakthrough from any of these discussions? Well, you know, I think, Hoda, there will be more talks. Uh, there is talk of a potential meeting between the foreign ministers of Russia and Ukraine, and the Russians now suggesting that there could be a meeting between President Zelensky uh, and President Putin, something the Russians have not said was possible uh, up until now. Some context here, though, I think, uh, Hoda, it's possible to argue that this uh, war, this conflict has been raging since back in 2014, hot and cold. So clearly one day's talks is not going to solve all, all that. Ukraine Ukrainian officials we've spoken to here said, give us more American weapons. Uh, that is how we will negotiate. And how do you know, we just saw the Ukrainian defense minister leave here in a convoy in army fatigues. Mm. Hoda. All right, Kier, some good perspective there. Thank you so much. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're back with your health, and this morning, an incredible story, and it highlights the importance of CPR. It certainly does. We have Brittany Matiro with us. She's about to reunite with the doctor who saved her life at 35,000 feet. But first, NBC's Kristen Dahlgren. She joins us with details of Brittany's story. Hey, Kristen, good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, Brittany's just 28, so everything about this story is shocking, including the fact there were at least three doctors on their way to a cardiology conference on that plane. But it was really something that any of us could have done that ultimately saved Brittany's life. It was supposed to be a bachelorette weekend in Arizona. We were really looking forward to it. But none of them could have predicted what would happen in the air just two hours into their trip. I closed my eyes and went to sleep, and that's the last thing I remember until I woke up and I was like in a stretcher like by the plane going into an ambulance. Brittany Matiro is 28. She works out three days a week. I've never had any like health issues ever like growing up. But somewhere between Newark and Phoenix, her heart stopped. Luckily, Dr. Kashif Chaudhry was on his way to a cardiology conference when he heard her friend scream. I found this woman who was completely unresponsive, uh, slumped over, um, immediately checked for a pulse. There was no carotid pulse. Uh, there was no radial pulse as well. 
So at this time, uh, you know, at this point, I'm thinking maybe she's having a cardiac arrest. He and his wife, who is also a doctor, sprung into action. He started CPR. And about 90 seconds into CPR, um, she started moving a little bit. When she started moving, checked her pulse quickly. There was a pulse. It was, it was a great pulse. The plane diverted to Oklahoma City, Dr. Chaudhry's wife holding Brittany's hand. Of just like a little flash of um, looking over on the plane and seeing a lady that wasn't my friend, like holding my hand. According to Dr. Chaudhry, cardiac arrest can happen to anyone, but Brittany's case is unusual. 8% of cases occur in people under 40. Without early intervention, up to 90% of patients die before ever reaching the hospital. Where would you be if he hadn't been on that plane? I wouldn't be here, which is so crazy. I got lucky that there was multiple cardiologists on board, but at the end of the day, like anyone who knew CPR could have helped me. Almost a month later, Brittany is doing well, still undergoing tests to see what went wrong, but determined to make sure she's ready if it happens to anyone else. CPR is what saved my life, um, so I definitely just want to have, it's an easy, quick skill to learn. And so Brittany and her friends are signing up for a class together, knowing just how important CPR is, guys. All right. Thank you, Kristen. Brittany, we are so happy to see you in person. It's been a month since this, since this happened. I cannot believe that story, but how are you feeling? And do you know what the source of, of the incident was? So I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, ever since like what happened, I always felt fine. I had a little chest soreness because I think they said like CPR is pretty yeah. um, tolling on your body. But I feel great. Um, and yeah. <laughs> you're still waiting to find out. You've yeah. run through all the tests and still trying to figure out yeah, how it could happen. Going to a lot of different doctors. Um, just last week, I had to go to a neurologist and do this whole brain scan. That was like one of the pictures you saw. And I have to be like an MRI still. But everything they said has been coming back pretty normal. So we're still not sure what it could be. What was mm -hmm. it like when you came to yeah. and you realized this had happened to you? Here, you're a young woman having cardiac arrest yeah. at 35,000 feet. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just astonishing to get your head around. Yeah, it was like so crazy. Like I said, the only thing I remember is like taking a nap right before the flight. Um, and then I woke up and I was on a stretcher going into an ambulance and my friends telling me like, hey, we had to stop the flight in Oklahoma. We're going to the hospital. And I was just like, this is a dream. Like right. this can't what? be real. Why? I still can't believe it happened. I, I mean, the idea that there were doctors on board, doctor, doctors who were on the way to a conference. Cardiologist. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and a cardiologist who happens to be here with us today. You haven't uh, seen him in person since this happened. So we want to bring out Dr. Chaudhry. Come on out, Dr. Chaudhry. Dr. Kashif Chaudhry. Oh, how are you? you? Good. How are you? Thank we you should for just say me. we'd all be hugging you, especially if, Brittany. But I know your nice COVID protocols don't allow oh it at hospital. But you, you look much different. <laughs> Dr. Chaudhry, I mean, this is incredible. You. Like, I, you know, there's always sort of that idea that they're going to say over the loudspeaker, we need doctors. How yeah. did you first come to realize there was an emergency mm -hmm. on board? Yeah, so, you know, two hours into the flight, I was trying to take a nap, and the screams from the back, and I was like, you know, I think there is an emergency, and 15 seconds later, there was an announcement of an overhead emergency. Um, we ran to the seat, and we found Brittany slumped over, unresponsive, no pulse at all. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you can have difficulty in assessing a pulse when someone's sitting or uh, standing. So we, we laid her onto the island and then checked her pulse again. There was no pulse in her carotid and the, and the wrist as well. So we knew she was having a cardiac arrest. So you knew you had to jump into action right away. How Absolutely. much time did it take to revive her? So it took about 90 seconds. And, you know, we were not keeping time, but roughly so, because every two uh, minutes we're trained to switch CPR. Uh, uh -huh. My wife was ready to take over when she started moving. Your wife's a doctor, too. She's a doctor. I mean, can you believe So here's one of your angels. <laughs> I think you had three guardian angels yeah. on that flight. What's it like to kind of be sitting next to each other? Again? Oh, it's so crazy. Because, like, I know we met before, but, like, I don't remember. And um, it's just, like, I'm just so thankful. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, no, no worries. I mean, I, I, the, the, the thing is, that I think the important lesson here is that anyone on that plane should have done the same and could have done the same. It's yeah. just CPR. Well, people sometimes I think are afraid to do CPR, yeah, even you, if they, you know, if they've had the training, they're thinking, oh, could I? What if it's? What if it's not needed? Could right. I make things? What worse? if I don't do it right? Yeah. So it's very understandable to be scared when yeah. someone's, you know, unresponsive. You're thinking maybe I'd, I'd hurt them, but the American Heart Association states that you know the benefit of starting chest compressions in a person who is having cardiac arrest far outweighs the risk to someone who doesn't need it. So you should just, if someone's unresponsive, you don't even need to be able to know how to check a pulse. If they are unresponsive, just, you're presuming cardiac arrest. Just start CPR. I love 
love that you and call 911. Well, I love that you and your friends are actually taking the course. Yeah. You're going to learn how to do telling it. Telling everyone I know, like I even was talking to like my uh, boss yesterday, and he's going to like do a company wide thing as well and bring it to everyone's attention. So I'm definitely telling everyone they should definitely learn because, like Dr. Chaudhry was saying, like yeah, he's a doctor and he helped me, but anyone on that plane who knew CPR could have saved my life as well. How cool is it that you're sitting next to the guy <laughs> who saved your life? It's like so I can't crazy. get over this. And wow. you keep, there were other doctors on the plane. You yeah. still keep in touch with them as well. Yeah. So one of the other doctors, I'm also mm -hmm. a cardiologist. I believe he was helping Dr. Chaudhry with like the AED machine. Right. I believe it's right. called. Mm -hmm. um, I realized his practice is only about 30 minutes away so I've been going to him because I figured he kind of saw what happened and he would be a good source. I love how to. she said thank you and you said no worries just like <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. just like it was Wednesday in your life. Exactly. Wow <laughs> well thank you both for being here we really appreciate thank it we're happy much. to see you Brett. Oh, thank you for thank having you us. Thank you so much. Good morning everybody welcome to today it's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah see <laughs> so this show is for you my friend. We got a huge beautiful crowd. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Is Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our next guest has been entertaining us since she was a kid. Raven Simone was just four years old when she first played Olivia on The Cosby Show. Uh, she went on to release music and star in her own sitcoms. That's So Raven and Raven's Home. Well, now she and her wife Miranda are giving us a glimpse into her home life with her new YouTube show, 8 p.m. In one episode, Miranda casually drops, drops this little nugget during a road trip. I left two potatoes in the oven, so hopefully this traffic you left them in the oven i had what do you mean they weren't done what am i supposed to do between a rock and a hard place oh you should have turned the oven off and let it just slowly yeah <sighs> we'll update you guys on the status of our home once we get back there <laughs> Is this for real? Is this for real? Was everything okay? We assume the house is... Everything was fine. She makes the most amazing potatoes, even if she leaves them in the car. I mean, in the oven overnight. Do they still taste good? They always taste good. They always taste good. Your wife, Miranda, you get married during the pandemic, and now you've got this YouTube show together. You, I mean, up until now, you had been keeping your private life fairly private. Why did you decide now would be a good time to, to, to start this show? Uh, I figured now would be a good time because I found my life partner. I found the person that makes me feel comfortable and in my skin, and she's down for the cause. Mm. And, you know, she kind of brought it to my attention. There are not a lot of people in the industry that are in our age bracket, a part of the LGBTQ plus community, multiracial, 
talented and want to make so positive change, want to have conversations, mm -hmm. want to make sure that, you know, if you don't agree, tell me why. You yeah. don't have to cuss me out. You don't have to cancel. You can just and tell me why. Talk about yeah. it. And we can talk about it and we can learn from each other. And I learn from her every day and hopefully Aww. she learns from me, vice versa. But I felt comfortable and yeah. she's down for the cause. Mm -hmm. She's a good talker. She's much better than me. <laughs> I don't know. If that's yeah, yeah, oh, it's oh, very true. <laughs> <laughs> she makes you laugh too. I know she's kind of the impetus behind these extra friends that you have show up on the show. You know, these, yeah. these little cutouts. We've got the queen. Yeah, we got the queen. We have Danny DeVito. Um, we also... Wait, is this for real? No, listen. The house is flooded with celebrities. <laughs> they might not have blood in their system, uh. but they're definitely in the house. Um, that's Nicolas Cage right there. <laughs> it's always important to surround yourself with A-list. You know what I mean? You gotta make sure that you're, you know, high level. This is so funny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. great. You, know, you have been in our consciousness since you were four years old, and you go, that's a raven, you're the cheetah girls, all this. As as this happens, was this the natural progression mm. to actually be, let us see you, as opposed to these other characters? Mm. I believe so, sir. I believe that when your outlet of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and all of that, allowed for me to say, hey, there's not a writer. There's not mm. another creator behind the process of telling me how to show emotion. Mm. And that was hard for me too, because I'm trained to say the line mm -hmm. and make somebody feel somebody else's words. Ooh. And I'm learning more about myself with this process. I'm learning about being in a marriage. I'm learning about just who I am. Right before uh, the pandemic started, I started realizing that I would like talk and sit with people. And then on a joke, I would leave or mm. face out. Oh, jeez. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes. For those who don't know, you got to face towards camera. So I'm like, hey, 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 yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in real life right now. I need to get my life in order. There's no freeze frame and credits roll. You know, I'm like, That's where's good. my card? <laughs> So I'm working on life. Uh, one of the things that, that we all enjoy, in addition to like literally watching you grow up, you've become a bit of an activist uh, at this point in your life. And and for those who haven't been following the story closely, down in Florida uh, this week, uh, the governor there, Governor DeSantis, signed what some call uh, the Don't Say Gay Law. Uh, and Raven Simone and her fellow castmates decided to, to, to walk out. Yeah. Um, you walked out there. You've since returned to work. But yeah. why was it so important for you and your castmates to do that? Well, I am a part of the LGBT plus, LGBTQ plus community. Uh, we have a lot of diversity on our set as well. Um, and I'm gonna say this, and this is my thing. If there's a don't say gay bill, there should be a don't say straight bill mm -hmm. because it's not fair and there are multiple kinds of humans in this world and you are ruining the psyche, the confidence of so many young children mm -hmm because you are discrediting their parents, the people they love, the people that raise them, the people that teach them the manners when they walk into that schoolroom. So if you're not gonna honor their family, your family shouldn't be honored either. So let's just make it even slash equal, maybe. We right. should we should point out we did reach out to the Walt Disney Company for comment. Haven't heard back, but after the bill was signed into law Monday, the company did release a statement, as you know, and that statement does read in part. We put it on our screen here. Our goal as a company is for this law to be repealed by the legislature or struck down in the courts, and we remain committed to supporting the national and state organizations working to achieve that. All right, and last but not least, you stay busy. I don't know how you juggle all these things. I told. <laughs> Her during the commercial break, my kids have this healthy obsession with her in Raven's <laughs> home. We were in Puerto Rico. Yeah. They got out of the pool so they could watch her show. I mean, they are. Wow. But when they're with you, I feel like they're safe. Yes. Like there's a there's a message to it. There's a theme. Yeah, Raven's glad. home really quickly. Yeah. What do you want to say? I just want to say we're in season five of Raven's home. We have Rondell, Isaac, Emmy, Felix, <laughs> Michael, Michelle. We are back in San Francisco and things are popping. There are characters popping. that you remember when back in That's So Raven. Adrian Bailon is making an appearance and multiple other people. Please nice. check it out on Disney Channel. Oh, they Friday. do. So, yes. Raven. Raven, thank you. You're Catch new episodes of 8 p.m. weekly on YouTube. YouTube as well. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. 
rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Okay, the Grammy Awards are this weekend in Las Vegas, and that's where our good pal Justin Sylvester is going to be. He's going to be on the red carpet covering music's biggest night. What happened, Justin? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm still icing my face down from Sunday, girl. I can feel that slap <laughs> still, honey. What are you talking about? This is going to be with me for a while. You mm -hmm. are so crazy. I saw you, you out of the corner of my eyes. I was like, does he have an ice pack? What is happening? I know. What's going to happen? Did you bring the... that ice pack to, to work? <laughs> Oh, I've been I've been walking around with this literally <laughs> since it happened, trying to keep the swelling down because that's how hard he hit Chris Rock. Oh, I felt my. it in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, okay. All, All right. right. So now the following the Oscars, it seems the like the Grammys will probably be a calm affair. Calm? Are you crazy? <laughs> this award show is in Vegas. It is going to be wild. And there are some things that you can expect. Obviously, Lil Nas X will perform, uh -huh. BTS, Billie Eilish, but there are a few unanswered questions. Okay, tell okay. us, what, what are, are they? they? Answer them. Well, everybody wants to know, is Kanye going to show up? Mm. You know that the Grammys pulled his performance after his online activity didn't line up to their standards. And he's been quiet lately, but this man is nominated for five Grammys. And something that Kanye is not going to shy away from is a mic, okay? Am I right? <laughs> so you think he's going to end up being there and, and possibly getting awards? I think if Kanye saw what happened on Sunday, he was probably like, okay, is that what we're doing to comedians on, on oh. award shows? Okay, oh. let me see if I can who's, just show wait, up who's real hosting, quick. Who's hosting the Grammys? Is there a host or is it? Yes, that's yeah. the thing. Trevor Noah is hosting oh, the Grammys. Okay. And he had tweeted something about Trevor Noah. But Trevor Noah actually said, no. don't cancel Kanye, counsel Kanye. So I think, you know, Trevor Noah would be like, come right on in, take a seat, be quiet, but take a seat. Wow, that's wow, going to be, we're going to be watching wow. to see. Okay, Taylor Swift made some New York mm -hmm. headlines. Mm -hmm. She sure did. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but we're if Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. yeah. what's that? We're Swifties. Which, oh, I'm a Swifty too. Yeah, okay. I'm a Swifty too. Just wanted to let you know. And if you are a NYU student and you are a Swifty as well, this woman is going to be the speaker at your commencement. Cool. I mean, this is going to be huge. She's going to take over Yankee Stadium, and she's also going to receive an honorary doctorate. And now, yeah. I, I feel like we should go back to college for a well, day. By the way, it's not just these graduates. It's the last couple of years because oh. no one got a real ceremony, right? That is so cool. You are absolutely correct. But I got to ask you guys something. I mean, do people not trust me with the microphone? Because you two have done it, but no one has ever asked me to give a <laughs> commencement speech. <laughs> yet. How did you even the word find is, those pictures? The word pictures? is yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Oh, I think once I got on, the kids would be like, do I leave college? Am I supposed to go out into the world? Because the first thing I would say is, stay in school, girl. The job market is terrible. <laughs> you are so... By the way, do you know that there is a course at NYU for kids to learn about Taylor Swift? And you can't get the in the lyrics. course. They it's sold out. The lyrics they're studying. James and yeah. August. Yeah. And Invisible String. It's all sold out. You can't get in. I heard Jenna Bush Hager is first on the list for the waiting list. <laughs> I'm already in that class next year. All right. Okay, season two of Bridgerton. We need, we can, to, we need to binge ASAP. Have you been it? Okay. I saw the first three episodes, and I got to say something, you guys. Uh -oh. So it is breaking records. Yes. Netflix records shook. 193 million hours in its first three hours. Yeah. It is the most Crazy. viewed opening. I do have to say, though, I have a question for Shonda Rhimes. Where is the beef? 
I want to clutch my pearls. Where's the booty? Where's the sex? Oh, it's a not... lot more tamer. Oh. Yes, there's a lot more tamer than season one. You know what I mean? Oh, but that but didn't happen still until... Sen- but is it still sensual? You don't always oh. have to have the booty out. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, sensual. Wow. Yeah. Come on. I don't know, girl. We just got off a of sex life, okay? <laughs> I, I'm looking for some sex life Okay, stuff, but here, okay? here's the thing, Justin. That stuff didn't happen until season, uh, episode seven, which we yeah. all remember very vividly. So maybe you just got to wait. Wait, hold on, hold on. I thought you were about to say that stuff didn't happen until now. I'm like, no, people were getting raunchy in the 1800s, honey. Trust me. I've seen some books. They were nasty in the old English times. Justin, we love you. You You are so funny. Okay, you can catch Justin weekdays on Daily Pop. And you can also watch Justin. We'll be watching him. He's going to be at the Grammys red carpet. What are you wearing, Justin? Did that backless number come in the right size? No. There was a McQueen mix-up. It did not come through. But I will not disappoint on Sunday. Oh, you yeah. will not disappoint. Okay, I can't wait. We'll I see, hope it's some leather or some we'll leather or something. We'll see you Monday, too. Okay, don't, don't forget. Don't no, no. you say it. There is a new episode of Savannah's cooking show. <laughs> it's out today. Be sure to check it out. It's called Starting from Scratch. It's right here on Today All Day. And it's not a joke. It's Actually, not. It's we real. have a delicious recipe. This isn't your grilled cheese and your pancakes, okay? This is legit. It is? Chicken shawarma. You did not. Well, shall we eat tomorrow? Sweet. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We are going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurants, Shuka and Shuket. I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. Chef Aisha. You know, oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Shook okay, perfect. Shawarma. Well, let's cheers first. Oh. I have a drink here. Oh, where's my Oh, what is this This fancy is a gazo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit and seltzer. If we were feeling like getting a little litty, we'd have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. We're for gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat.
We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have some mm -hmm. lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you is. something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your- Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so if Cooking <laughs> show over, this is incredible. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How all, much? All of it. It's like baking, where they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? the wet. No, that's fine. As long as it's combined. But right now we're going to add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Four. Okay. So right this now. Is, that was paprika. This is cumin. Cumin. Yes, and this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. It is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was going to guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really going to give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're going to whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize Look how beautiful this marinade. This is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're going to do the onion. So okay, wait, one. I know how to do this. Okay. What so you want to do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the chicken. So right now we're going to use chicken thighs okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to dump the chicken oh, right wow. into our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. That Christmas. Mm. Exactly. Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to cut this first so I can show you. If you notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C, and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good. Is it like... Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut and then when I do it I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. <laughs> Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Done. Now, your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves because then I just don't feel all gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. You're, the full you're massage kidding. here. Look at this. They're living the their best life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there if you don't mind grabbing it that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 48 hours later, 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. Now, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delish. Yes. And I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why don't I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. is that all right? Yep. Oh, okay. And then you are going to use your tongs spread to okay. spread them out, yeah, right? right. Cool. But like does each guy like... have to live in his own little world? No, nah, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's, they're not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay so we're going to put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven, but it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a French place. French fries? I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. I'm so to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay. We have mayo. A couple mayonnaise. And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. okay. So you have lemon juice there. Yeah. 
to your lemon left. Lemon juice, green lemon okay. juice, okay. Ooh. And then the next thing you're gonna do is gonna grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Ooh, now this have is scary. Have you done that before? I have, and I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so, so I'm gonna put the that. whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Yeah, see, yeah, it's so, so scary. Close. Like, am I am I doing like this? You are. Can I just forth? show you something though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this I don't rest it on here. Yeah. This oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the end. So you could kind of. Oh, that's a better just way do to do it. Three yeah. or four times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. And let's turn it around. Should be all good. And that was perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. okay. Now, if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, no. But then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> perfect. Mm. Okay. And we're going to add the dry spices now. Oh. Oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I would have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, a mm -hmm. half a teaspoon. Okay. The next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil do the trick. Like, it, like they cover all the sins. Like, huh? All the sins. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, and Did then I we have our all? salt. No salt. How much salt? One, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. How would you tell if this was good or not? I learned something. And what is you it? You must taste it. And here, <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm going to taste, taste it, it too. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. Good. Do you think now it's you good? Can, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're going to serve it in because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart. Okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this is mm -hmm. just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessive about clean plate club here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh. So if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken. We're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. we to cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall prom receive. As promised, we're ha we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. let's just try and this, it out. We're just going to have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this Oh cooking. my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For our next trick, homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? 
you could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm going to have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. Yes. We're going to show you exactly that that, it, that how, it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're going to open the blades mm -hmm. here. Okay. And then we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. Now, see, so I'm this is, get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out and hold it by its edges, because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini, cabbage would be good in here, too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. So you can sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments, and we're not going to use that right now, okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's going to puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're going to throw so them in here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chickpeas. One half cup tahini paste. So you're going to take oh, that, it's not that your small, with your small little uh, spatula, because mm -hmm. you want to get every uh, oh, single little Maybe morsel is, of that out. Maybe it is a little piece. It could work it's, with this. It's viscous. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, that. Okay, so your tahini is in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup lemon juice. Right. Okay, Rotate. olive oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay, you can put that in there. Perfect. And then you have salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those, yes. how much? You guys, what you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make but it how rain. how do I know that? Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch. Okay. okay? So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know That's what that, a lot. That, right, but you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. Just so kidding. this way you know. This is the way you know what it feels like. Okay. All right, I'm so gonna, put that on your board. To, oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we got to do a little bit over the left shoulder because, you know, we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? Before we walk out of here today. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah, let me just, oh boy, oh boy. Stand clear. So what are we going to do? Do I need to cover this? Is no, it going to no, come no, exploding out? Like, hit this button. Is it pulse? That says off. Ah. Okay, good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pulse, well, now how come I don't just on it? So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. And have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around, which I'm gonna do this time mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of oh. flip them on their top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, okay? I so, have to go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is, one cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's going to hold its peak. You look good. Yeah. You see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like. It's and now smooth. you can see if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly. Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right. So time to stop. And right. And you're going to have it. an intervention. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh, okay, so okay. let's taste it. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it, mm -hmm. lift that up. Now, What's, how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, and the same gonna... thing, you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yep, let's do the spice first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is it that too beautiful. heavy? It is, beautiful. No, 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 keep going. Okay. Mm. And you're going to fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. Oh, seriously. How beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, that? that is gorge. All right. 
So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little uh, celery stick? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef tasting. Oh, yes. Oh, that. I love that. And then we'll put that a little much, bit. huh? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, why not? Look at this. I mean, if we're going to do I mean, it. come to mama. Yeah. Okay, oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh, my gosh. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. If there is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Fancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. Great. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong suit. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. Okay. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut, so that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around. That it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so you're gonna pinch it. You feel it's tight. I do. Right. Put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they're mm -hmm. so small. Oh, interesting. I, I always take the skin really? off. Really? Yeah, but that's just, I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the, the, the cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm going to cut it, cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then things. I would just cut them into half, ounce, half inch. Mm -hmm. Little pieces. Now, now would that, you do that's, it like that, or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive, because again, we want to be safe and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I think so I'm just... doing a challenge. <laughs> so you want them cut side down, because now they're not going to roll away from you, oh, right, okay. right? And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay, we're going to add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good. Uh, fat content, mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then last but not least would be our feta. Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey, and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken, mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. Let me and try I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I just kind of figure people can add more if they so right. desire. How's that? Perfect, good. perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. 
Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you could show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it, you and know it. And this guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're gonna cut a little bit of the bottom off, like that. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you just wanna remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it, you got it, there All you right. go. I guess I just gotta be They'll a little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're gonna cut this in half. You're gonna take the knife, you're gonna put it in as much as you can, mm -hmm. right? In the beginning, got it? Okay. Yeah. Good, good. See, now I'm like okay. stuck Hold and on. this guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. put your hand flat mm -hmm. and now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. <laughs> Go ahead. You almost got it. Where's the chainsaw? Can I okay, saw on. it on the other side? Okay, let me help you for a second. Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're going to take that out. Okay. okay? And then when you get to this point, you're gonna take your knife, yeah. you're gonna go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would wanna do. Okay. I'd wanna be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's, oh, ouch, darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without, no, it was just a little tap, okay. just a little tap. So wait, hold tap. on, hold, but let's do it together so that you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Put it down. Starting to see. We're gonna the... go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay, now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good, see, so you did it. I would think this would be the hardest part. Okay, so let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're gonna okay. all right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. Okay, you wanna get the Where's bottom? my friend? Okay, here we go. Mm. There's Jeez. the front. Okay. okay. <clears throat> now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now we so have these So I'm gonna show you plates. how to use these guys. All right. Okay, one is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay, so you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part, you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was, on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't Easier know. Enough. Okay, there. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that Okay. So it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh! We're going to put that in here. I would have put it the other way. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're oh. going to turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. My heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay, and now you're gonna put that in there. There you go, oh! look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in here. There you go. Get in here. Yeah, good. So we're gonna shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, and we're gonna wait for the blade to completely stop spinning. Yeah. Right, and we're gonna open this. Mm -hmm. And you see that in the inside? Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. I so get it, we're gonna take, processor. If you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that okay? What's this for, anyway? For, this for the shawarma. Oh. We need a fresh crunch okay. front top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take the top out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, let's go. All right. So this is gonna give you more of like a slice okay. of cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, just put a little Yeah, just put a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. oh. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. There you Look at it, isn't that friendly? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yum. We have one more thing, the star of the show. The chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at this. Oh man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof, the recipe, when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here, mm -hmm. see how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. Just right in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, and can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing?
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You I can't know, believe I did you this. You nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare Okay, perfect. It? Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help. Let make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm gonna give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug, mm. and here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on here. Come to me for those of white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's yeah. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That's that is here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread right. some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro serrano chilies and cardamom. Mm. Onions and that. stuff in there, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with mint and cilantro? Do I just, just shove it in just there? Just shove it in there. Okay. And then, of course, we have to bring over our cabbage. Okay. Let me turn this around okay. so you could have your so my, half. I'll just do my. And I'll have mine. Yeah. We'll just kind of sprinkle it's it. The in rip there. and dip. You know. I mean, it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Come. Mm -hmm. Do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then. We'll have to do just a little, just a little on I your first bite. Ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag swirl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mmm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match, and no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. To face a new round of talks between Russia and Ukraine overnight after the Kremlin's pledge to scale back military operations near Kyiv. Ukraine's leader cautiously optimistic, Washington skeptical.